Randomites. Randomites are here? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we got a surprise for you tonight. <laughs> I like that. I don't have that in the Branhamville. There it is. Huh? That'll teach them. All right, good evening, YouTubers. Hello. Good night. Good evening. Praise God. All right, got a good Bible study for you tonight. And uh, let's just get going. Let's do this. All right. Part three of the seminar is coming up very quickly. Man, time goes by fast. Imagine that. We're going to be gone before you know it. Yes. You know, it really is time to change your life now and do it quickly because it seems like just yesterday I just did a seminar. It goes by that fast. All right. All right. It goes by quicker if you turn this thing on. <laughs> there it goes. All right. I'm still on the radio every morning and afternoon, as you know, uh, five days a week, Monday through Friday, on those two stations. I'm always on the radio on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. Those are always ready to go. If you uh, want to help us pay the utility bills here, the utility bill tripled, and it ain't even hot yet. It's scary. You can switch over from Google to Good Search and put in our charity name, Hardcore Christianity, and you YouTubers can help us out a lot. You'll pay us every time you search the web. All right. Tonight's teaching is on uh, our YouTube channel, not the live stream channel. Thursday nights is on live stream. Tonight's teaching will be on uh, number two, our House of Healing channel. If you're interested in getting in the healing and deliverance ministry and you want to save a lot of time and effort, please go to the deliverance training channel, number one, on YouTube and go through those 18 sessions and you'll be ready to rumble. Uh, YouTubers, now remember part of our ministry is you. You're on YouTube and you're watching the videos and you're going to go back to your church and open up a terror cell and terrorize the devil. And you open up a little terror cell takes two or three Christians to do it according to the Bible and you gather there in the name of the Lord and then you start picking off the sick people in your church and what you do is you approach them gently and quietly in private and say hey you know I hear you I heard your prayer request or something like that and then you say listen I've got a couple friends of mine we'd like to pray with you peel them out of there take them to your secret lair <laughs> and that's it you drive the demons out of them and you make sure they get healed. And uh, as soon as you do the first one, that one will tell somebody, then it'll start spreading. It'll click, 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 click. I had them lined up years ago at the Dream Center in Scottsdale. Every Tuesday night after Bible study, we'd stay, we'd get out of there, say, 11 o'clock or something. And then it'll get bigger and bigger. You'll get caught. And then you'll get thrown out. Um because churches are set up in a certain way and they got a structure there and if you're doing anything spiritual and they're not in complete control of it they start laying Tiffany cufflinks they start freaking it's all demonic and so when you get thrown out that's a sign from God that you're to move to your next assignment which is an elevation not a kick down. You go up all the time with the Holy Ghost. You do not go down. I have a question. Okay? Yeah, question. Is this church a 501c3? It's a 501c3, but we're not, we're not really a church. It's a healing center. Yeah, but it's non-profit. Yeah, absolutely. He wouldn't know if this is a 501c3. It is, and if uh, you want a receipt for your donation, we'd be happy to email you one, mail you one, wherever you like. Okay? Most people want them, obviously, after the after December 31st, okay? Open up your terror cells and start serving the Lord. Just step out and do it. That's how you do it, by the way. You just step out and do it. You get some basic training. It's here. Or you can go to somebody else and get good training. I don't have all the answers. I'm not the best thing in the world. But wherever you get your training, after you get the training, don't keep doing it like the silly women Paul told Timothy about Remember them? They're ever learning, but they're never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We have them here. Every church has them. Every group has them. People just learn and learn and learn and learn, and they never do anything. See? 
You have to do something to activate the Holy Ghost. Learning all the time is a failure. I can't believe you said that. Hey, thanks for your donations. The Healing House is next door. We got it in escrow. So we should be, we should be. Grandpa told me, never count your chickens before they're hatched. That's what he told me. Never knew what that meant. But it's supposedly, it's going to be closing in a couple weeks. We're going to renovate that building over there. If you'd like to be a part of it, we would very much appreciate it. Every week now, somebody comes from out of state here for healing, deliverance, and counseling. It used to be two or three a month. Now it's two or three a week. Flying in from out of state to get healed, watching the YouTube videos. Many people want to come and can't come because they can't afford to stay here. So we're going to use uh, that facility there kind of as a, what would you call it? What? Layover. Layover. Okay, the South Africans know what those things are. They're laying over all the time. Yes, sir. All right. All right, now, here's my new pointer. Look at that baby. Isn't that something? Thanks, Kelly. Uh, I'm going to let the devil have it right between the eyes tonight. <clears throat> He's got two massive clubs he uses to beat the living heck out of people. And these two weapons of his are spectacularly successful on Christians. Okay? We're going to go into the world of psychology tonight, Satan style. I'm going to show you how he beats the living tar out of Christians using two massive clubs. What are they? The two eyes are his major weapons smashing Christianity, and he's crushed it in this country. We are in deep trouble here in America. What it is is he uses these two clubs to beat Christians into submission. Submission meaning they give in to him and they live a weak, useless, gutless, failure Christian life. He beats them into submission using these two clubs. It's incredibly effective and he starts beating the person in childhood. Then he ramps it up if he loses them and they get saved. Once you get saved or born again, it sets off red flags in the spirit world and the devil shifts gears on you if they lose you. The original plan is not to lose you, get you sick, drive you through the gates of hell, and leave you screaming there for eternity. If they fail and grace and mercy comes knocking at your door, they don't quit. They just switch gears. They regroup. They revamp. They're not like Christians who face trials and temptations and they sit on their butt and they whine. Demons don't do that. They regroup, reevaluate, reassess, improvise, and adapt. Christians don't. They're fanny suckers. <laughs> what are we going to do now? That's a born again Christian. We don't need any more of them. We need disciples. Demons don't just sit there and say, well, I lost that battle. I think I'll go home and mope. They don't do that. They come right back with this monster. Let's take a quick look at it. Genesis chapter 3. The serpent was more arum, cunning, than any beast of the field which Jehovah had made. This is the King James Bible. So, as I've mentioned before, if you see that there in the King James Bible, that's what? Yahweh, Jehovah. Okay, that's how you know it is. If you see the uh, lowercase, it's not Yahweh. Okay? And he said to the woman, the devil's talking to her now, uh, has God said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Here's how the devil approaches born-again Christians. He gives them a piece of truth. He never totally abandons truth. He likes facts. He gives partial truths, though. He never gives the person the whole truth. He only gives them a partial one. He gave Eve a partial truth. Hey, God told you not to eat this and that. Oh, okay. 
And the woman said, wait a minute, we can eat of all the trees in the garden, all of them. And he says, of the one, this one here, he said, don't eat that or we'll die. This tree only. We can eat anything else in the garden but that out of that tree, see? And Adam and Eve were newly created, but in a way they were kind of like kids. If you tell a kid not to do something, that's one of the first things they're interested in doing. You, get, you haven't had any kids? I, I, I had two daughters. Any parent knows what I'm talking about. And later on, you're trying to use psychology on them, but unfortunately, you waited too long, they got too old. If you'd had those skills when they were younger, you could have nailed the kids. You would have told them not to do the thing you wanted them to do. You'd out them. <laughs> But you waited too long. Now they're too old. They're thinking on their own, and now you can't fool them because they're already smarter than you, and they're in third grade. <laughs> we can't eat a, that tree or we'll die. Then the devil comes back with, he'll give you a little bit of truth, and then he'll just nail you with a bold-faced lie right in your face. He'll just contradict God right to your face. No, you're not going to die. Come on, that's too... That was too much. Surely he didn't mean that. That's the problem Christians have with taking blunt truth. You wouldn't believe how many people have stormed around in my office over the years or tried to storm out. Yeah, I had secret locks over at the House of Healing. I haven't had those installed here yet, but I will get them later. And if you tell somebody too much truth, too blunt, some people will bolt. They'll bolt out the door. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. Because they don't want to change. They want to live in a world of delusions. So the devil said, oh wait, come on now. That's, that's too much. That can't be. Now, here's what he's telling you, Eve. Let me tell you about God. He says, the day you eat that, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's. That's the Hebrew word Elohim. You will know good and evil and so on. Now what's happened? Insecurity and inferiority are now attacking Eve. God told her something, and he's questioning what he said. Since Eve's not smart enough to ignore that or take that thought captive, she's now starting to feel insecurity. She's wondering if she got the straight scoop from Jehovah. Once a person starts to feel insecure, their, their ground starts to shake a little bit. They don't quite feel, I was strong before, but now after hearing what you just said, and now I've started to think about it, maybe what, if, huh, how, what, suddenly in her inner man, she starts to feel insecure. Every born-again Christian who hears the word of the Lord and doesn't receive it as truth, later on will start to waver, almost like Brother James, waving in the sea, driven by the wind and tossed. They start to feel insecure. Am I safe? Is it going to work out? Will this happen? Will I be okay? What about my future? Eve started to question the information God gave her. Was it complete? Did he tell me the whole story? Was he holding out on me? Wait a minute, I didn't hear this from him. And she starts to feel uncomfortable. The woman saw then the tree was good. She started looking, looking at that thing. So when, you know, now that you think about it, once a Christian starts to become insecure in God's word, they start looking for something else to secure themselves to. A relationship, a person, a church, a new doctrine, a cult, a new idea, an effervescent personality, Tony Robbins, a new idea, a self-help book. They start to go for something they can feel in their soul secure. Okay? This is psychology 101, Satan style. 
I'm telling you how he thinks and how he manipulates people emotionally using their soul. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> now he goes to the lust of the eyes and lust of the flesh, and he gives her comfort. Stuff, certain stuff you look at is comfortable. That picture of that guy clubbing that baby seal made me uncomfortable when I watched it. I felt, oh my God, what are you doing? You're clubbing a baby seal to death? I felt kind of a yuck come over me. That's not something I could do, even if you paid me. I wouldn't be able to do that. Not this tree. This tree was gorgeous. Why didn't God make that tree look like a big old mound of feces? So she would stay away from it. You ever think of that? Why'd that tree look so good? Why does everything the devil used seem to look good? Why doesn't God just turn everything ugly except what he wants you to do? Because you have free will. You're not a robot. You're not retarded. You're not an android. You have free will, and the gospel is based on free will. <coughs> Your rewards in heaven are based on free will. This isn't a cakewalk down here. you got to be an overcomer, not a cakewalker. This tree was drop-dead gorgeous, and he left it that way because Father told her, don't eat out of that tree. You'll die if you do. The devil came along and caused her to question God's word, and she started to feel insecure, scared. Fear follows insecurity. Every child molested by their parents or grandparents starts to have a sense of deep-seated insecurity. It stays with them the rest of their lives. And then they get fear. Fear always follows in insecurity. When the person is secure, fear has no foothold. Is this making sense? Insecure people are afraid. Disciples on the ship screaming, there's a phantom. Ah! What was, what was the sense? What would happen? Deep insecurity suddenly came up in the disciples when they saw that Jesus thought it was a phantom. Jesus then tried to get this security back by comforting them, saying, be of good cheer. It's me. I'm not a phantom. See the psychology play there. Fear always follows insecurity. Check it out. She's using her eyes now, and that's comforting her, because now she's doubting God. He didn't give her the full scoop. The demon got her to feel insecure. Look, wise, God held out on me. There was information I needed. He didn't tell me. Now, instead of insecurity, the demon, the devil hit her with inferiority. She's now starting to sense that others are wiser than she is. She's not wise enough to make it, and now she really feels insecure because she feels inferior. Inferior people are afraid of stuff they don't know. What happened? Oh my God. She took the fruit and ate. She gave it with Einstein standing next to her and he eats. I'd like to get my hands on him. Check it out. Lucifer, God's greatest creation and the greatest person that ever lived, becomes Satan. But how did it happen psychiatrically? Let's check it out. In Isaiah chapter 14 describes Satan's incredible fall. He says, you've fallen from heaven, a Lucifer, son of the morning. You are cut down to the ground. You weakened all the nations. And this is what you said in your inner man. You said it in your heart. God can read your heart. Yes. He's omniscient, so he knows what you're thinking. He knows what the angels are thinking. 
and it was all pride. The psychology of this is incredible. I will do this, and I will do that, and then I'll do this, and then I'll do that. And what's happening here is the devil is pumping himself up. He just finished wa watching a Tony Robbins video <laughs> and he's jacking himself up <laughs> I am the greatest thing in this universe notice that he's saying I will I I I I I he's the king of the narcissist I will be like God oh he used that on Eve a little bit You'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So you won't be insecure anymore. Since you're not like God, of course, there's some insecurity there. You don't know everything. And then he says, after he's completely consumed with himself, which was his greatest sin, which was pride. By the way, that's one of the hardest spirits to get out of somebody, particularly if it's a religious pride. What happened to him? Here's how the devil does it. He will build you up emotionally. He'll build you up mentally. He will tell you things that are great about you as a person. You know, you look good. You got a nice personality. Oh, people like you. Uh, you're attractive. You're pretty. You're smart. You're anointed. Oh, you know about the Bible. You got the Bible down, Pat. You're nailing that Bible. You're great. <laughs> You're spectacular. You ought to be leading a massive movement. You ought to be preaching the nations. That's his favorite line. Preaching the nations. And then the devil, after he's got you pumped up, brings you somebody way beyond you and shoves them right in your face. Lucifer, after he pumped himself up, made the mistake of looking at the throne room of Father. And the devil did something he now constantly does to born-again Christians. He gets them to compare themselves with somebody else. The devil looked at Jehovah and said, holy shoot, <laughs> I'm not as beautiful as I thought I was. I, he started to compare himself to somebody else. That's how he crushes Christians psychiatrically. He gets the person to compare themselves with another Christian. Compare your gifts with his. Compare your knowledge with them. Compare your anointing with them. Oh, now you're doing what? You're suddenly sensing inferiority. He started to feel inferior. He really wasn't the most beautiful thing in the universe. Father was. When you combine inferiority and pride, Foolish desperation follows. The person will make stupid mistakes, bad decisions, and the devil pounds their soul with regrets later. Comparing yourself with someone else is the devil's oldest sin. Had the ignorant fool said to himself, well, wait a minute, I'm the most beautiful thing in the universe except for Father. Okay, that's fine with me. None of us would be sitting here right now. The whole planet wouldn't be going to hell in a handbasket. But he made the mistake that he now causes us to make. He gets you to compare your body with somebody else. I don't have the booty. I don't have the looks. Where's, where's my shape? Oh, look at them. Look at the clothes. Look at the house. Look at He gets you to compare yourself with the Joneses. 
No offense if your last name is Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see what's happening here? Satan himself, Eve, started to feel inferior. As soon as you start to feel inferior, you lose your faith in God. Satan, Lucifer lost his faith in Father and turned on him. If you fall into the sin trap of comparing yourself with somebody else at any level, you're headed down. You lose. How do you know that? Well, let me, I'll show you. First Corinthians chapter 10. Paul said, we do not dare to make ourselves like that group. We don't do that. We don't compare ourselves with anybody in the church. I don't compare, compare myself with anybody. Why? We never have the Bible if Paul did. See, the devil tried to get him sucked into that co comparison sin. And there was a lot of stuff about Paul that sucked. He could have gotten inferiority in a heartbeat. Gee, I'm only five foot six. Everybody's taller than me. You ever met somebody who hates their height? They get that small man syndrome. So they, as Freud would say, overcompensate for their heights. So they start trying to act like a big man. <laughs> Acting like a jackass. <laughs> Nobody here does that, but I mean, I'm talking about the people out there. <laughs> Sunastao. Hey. I don't compare myself to you. I don't need your approval. I've got Father's approval. I don't answer to you. I answer Father. Amen. You're better looking than me. You're richer than me. You, you've got this and you've got that and I don't have it. I don't care. i got the Holy Ghost. I'm satisfied. Amen. Amen. Once you start comparing yourself with somebody else, down you go. And inferiority starts to take hold in your soul the two monsters and the devil starts to take the club and bash your head in. Inferiority is a horrible emotional feeling. A couple weeks ago a lady came in husband caught cheating on her he moved out and I said well listen uh, we're going to have to make a list of these people that you got ought and bad feelings and hard feelings for. She was okay with it, and I went down the list there, but then I asked her, what's the name of that girl your husband was sleeping with? She froze. So give me the name. Give it. <laughs> Don't make me get up. <laughs> she probably thought I was trying to get her name and get her phone number. <laughs> no, I had to have that name. Because she couldn't get healed without it. Why? She was comparing herself with that other woman that took her husband. And the demons came to her at night and told her, oh, he's doing this to her sexually. He's touching her hair. He's going through that. And it grated on her soul. While she felt inferior to the younger woman, the devil kept taking her down, lower, depression, loneliness, fear of her future. Don't you see it? Inferiority is a vicious club to be beaten with. I quietly explained to her as best I could. Father knew that affair was coming. He knew all about that. He's got an answer already fixed and ready to go. Father's got the answers before you get in trouble. All I got to do is get her to believe it. Amen. Amen. I know what you're thinking. We need a Red Sea miracle. No. no she got healed. Took, you know, I'd be patient with her. 
You don't do stuff to get approval from others because if you don't get the approval, the demons move in with what? Inferiority. Once you become inferior, you sense inferiority, you start to get insecure and you are wondering, am I on solid ground here? What's going to happen to me? Somebody's, somebody's always watching me. I open the shower and there they are. Why are they doing that? They feel inferior. Then they feel insecure. The two monsters of Satan that wipe out your anointing and your Christian life. We don't measure ourselves by them. We don't compare ourselves to them. Why? He read about the devil. Paul knew it much better than I do. He saw what the devil did. Hey, I should be, I want to be like God. That's what he said. Because he took a look at Jehovah and said, hey, you got me beat. And he said not wise. That was a gentle form. Uh, had Brother Mike been there, I'd been, you're stupid. But it's the same thing. Not smart. Uh-oh. King Saul reminds me of American Christianity. What's the psychology behind him? You ever wonder that? Well, I did. I took a hard look at him. There's a satanic psychology behind King Saul that is prevalent here in America today. King Saul grew up firstborn, tall, good-looking, best-looking guy in the family. <clears throat> Dysfunctional parents take advantage of first and second born children, particularly if they've got some skills and abilities and potential and intelligence, because they start dumping on them. And many times they'll take an older child in the family and turn them into an adult years before they should be an adult. If there's an early divorce or there's drunks in the family, the young, older child, the firstborn, suddenly has to become the parent in the home in many cases. They act more responsibly than the drunken parents. So then they're starting to, the older kids are starting to take care of the siblings as if they were their kids in a way. Okay, thanks for King Saul. Now you know what happened. Some kids don't make that adjustment and they develop what? Deep-seated insecurity. Saul had deep-seated insecurity being raised in that family. He was the golden boy expected to do the most incredible things in the world. Parents unwittingly many times dump pressure on children they shouldn't dump on them. Children must be grown along slowly and lovingly. Sometimes it doesn't work that way. The parents dump too much responsibility. They expect too much from them. They cause them to work too much. Allah, King Saul, there he is. The Jews told Jehovah to take a hike. They said, we don't want you as our king. We want a real king, a human king. So they told him to find the dope. Jehovah said, are right, you want a king? Is that what you want? You're sure you want it? You sure? Listen to me, saints of God. You've been praying for something and you don't have any answer. You, you hadn't heard a word. Sometimes that's not, a, not bad. But if you keep asking for it, oh shoot. dude, you may get it. They got it. They wanted a king. They kept pushing him. And he said, okay, I'm going to give in. I told you no 50 times. The 51st time, whatever it was, I'm going to give you a king. You want a cosmetic guy? You want somebody good looking? Got a guy for you. Click. Welcome. King Saul. Samuel, I want you to go find King Saul. Tomorrow, I'm going to send you a man. Here he is. I want you to anoint him as the king of Israel. Okay. He says, I will. I looked on my people and their cry has come to me. Eh? If you keep praying for something that you shouldn't have, you don't have any discernment, and then you start griping about it and crying about it and whining about it like you did when you were a kid, man, 
feel sorry for you. You may get that prayer answered. And I feel sorry for these Jews. They got that prayer answered. And they took a vicious beating having this guy who had deep-seated insecurity but looked GQ on the outside. See, you don't know what somebody's like by looking at them. As Grandpa said, looks can be deceiving. Yeah, that's right. Hmm? Yeah, that's right. Bill Cosby said it one time. He says, sometimes the ugly girl at the bar is the friendly girl. And he ought to know. <laughs> yes, I. A serial pervert knows that stuff. <laughs> They're crying to him. He finally gave in. Don't do it, friend. Don't push the Lord to give in at all costs. Don't do it. Sometimes quietness is an asset. Sometimes it's weight. Sometimes it's a temporary no. Be patient. Relax. Keep yourself chilled out. Father will not let you down. He heard your prayer. He's working stuff out for you, but don't push it. They pushed it. They pushed it. Samuel saw Saul and he said, Hey, Jehovah said, That's the guy I'm telling you about. See that big, tall, good looking guy? Gorgeous. That guy right there. What the Lord didn't tell him was how he'd been raised. And he had this deep sense of inferiority and insecurity right in there. Probably because he wouldn't have believed it. Probably wouldn't have believed it. Why? Carnal Christians don't listen to deep truths. They're too useless. They have no discernment. So what they see is usually what they go with. They're visual people. They're feeling people. Not spirit man, but feeling emotionally, feeling physically. <coughs> Lust of the eyes. They're looking. That's how they screw themselves up. Looking at Saul, you're going, hey, we hit the lottery. Look at this guy. Whoever saw a six foot five inch Jew? <laughs> this guy's a freak. He could have dunked had they had such a thing back then. <laughs> He's going to reign over my people, the Lord said. Here it is. Samuel took the oil and anointed him. He kissed him. He put it on his head. He said, this is why I'm doing it. You are anointed. You are the captain over Jehovah's inheritance. Israel is Father's inheritance in addition to you. Amen. Should have got an amen there, but there's a lot of backslidden people here tonight. <laughs> First Samuel 15, Samuel said, yes. I Check this out. Jehovah tells Saul what? I want you to go to the Amalekites and I want you to do this. Click, 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 click. Here's your walking papers. Do that. Saul looks at it and has a flashback to his childhood. Mom and dad did that to him. They said, Saul, we're going to Walmart. And when you watch all the kids, take care of the house, protect everything. They make a list for him. And Saul's the oldest, good-looking, tall, bright. He gets dumped on. He's the family dump. And he learned, like your kids. What do I got to say to get these two parents out of my face? Like your kids? I hear a mother giggling over there. <laughs> your kids think when you give them your list to do. Remember that honeydew list? Yeah, those don't go over well. They go, what do I got to do to get them out of here? So they learn the art of pacification. They carry it with them the rest of their lives. In their marriage, in their job, they get out of stuff all the time. Then, later on, because they're bright, good-looking, firstborn, intelligent, the one they dump on, they use that as a leverage on the parents because if you don't if you screw me over too bad who are you going to dump on and who's going to do your job for you while you're gone 
So they get out of it. See? Well, wait a minute. You told me to do this and this and that, right, Mommy? But I did. I did this and this and that. Well, I couldn't do that because of this excuse. I couldn't do that because of this excuse. But I'll do that later on. So they learn the art of pacifying their parents. King Saul looks at that list from Jehovah, clicks back to his childhood, goes, got it covered, Lord. He goes to the Amalekites, and guess what happens? He only goes down part of that list. Now, somebody's got to be listening to me. That partial list was birthed in his childhood from his parents. He learned to get out of stuff and make it up later. Why? Smart. Why? Firstborn. Bright. Skills. He learned the art of manipulation. Unfortunately, Jehovah can't be manipulated. Oh, I've tried it. Trust me. Don't do it. I have tried it. Oh, man. I've run a line of happy horse manure on him. You can't even believe. I've done it. I've done it. Yeah. You know what you're going to get? Crickets. <laughs> Saul said, check it out. He floats back to childhood here. Deep-seated insecurity and inferiority taught him to manipulate to get out of stuff. So he didn't look bad. Kids don't want to get in trouble. He says, yes, no, hold on, Samuel, cool it, time out. Here, look, I did do the list. Look, here he starts to go down the list, like, his, like he did when he was 14. He learned something else when he was a kid because of his inferiority and insecurities. He learned to blame other people for his problems. Yes, you go down that list, and if you didn't get that one done, you got to... Pin the tail on the donkey. You got to find somebody to blame. As soon as you start blaming somebody else for your problems, you have no chance of being healed and no chance of being delivered. None whatsoever. You're not going to face it. You're going to blame somebody else for your problem. You're done. He does it here. He says, "But well, the people, look, they did it." He pointing his finger. Carnal Christians always point their fingers at somebody else, something else, and sometimes God. And then he tries to manipulate Samuel, because that's the way King Saul was raised, man. He's bright, he's smart, he's a manipulator. He's in a way almost like an addict. Have you ever tried to work with an intelligent addict? Have you ever worked with one that's a dummy? No? Okay. The dummies are easy to spot. You catch them lying instantaneously, they screw up immediately. The smart ones, uh-uh. No, you'll lose your purse, your money, half the stuff in your house, your cars, stuff will start disappearing. What happened? Saul was like an intelligent addict. He had the brains, smart, but he had the stain on his soul, deep-seated insecurity. He had to learn to blame others. He, he had to learn to manipulate. What's he doing here? He starts manipulating Samuel. See? Saul knew that Samuel was a true man of God. And Saul knew Samuel was a worshiper. And he knew he was great at sacrificing to the Lord. So what's he do? He starts to manipulate Samuel. Oh, no, no, wait, wait. The people screwed up, not me. But, but it was really good intentions. See, good intentions aren't on the list. You put it on the list. Because you're a spiritual screw-up. You want to get healed? You take that off the list. No offense. On second thought, please be offended. Look, he uses this to manipulate Samuel. Oh, wait a minute. I got a pointer now. What am I doing? Look at that. He figures that's going to draw Samuel in to get him off the hook. Don't you see it? He's gone back to age 
12. That's the anointing. <laughs> he's a kid again. And he's trying to get out of being in trouble. Don't you see him? Don't you see that? Hey, John, will you take him in back in the prayer room? See that? Guess what else happens? Once you corner somebody who's a narcissist, who's a manipulator, who's a blamer, once you corner them, they'll try to get out of it by admitting it, hoping it's manipulation, hoping to get sympathy out of you, mother. They try to manipulate sympathy out of you. So he goes to his plan B, C, and D. You're right. You're right. I sinned. He can't get out of it now. Samuel had given him the truth, and there wasn't any way to get out of it. Samuel pulled out Jehovah's list. Hey, look at that. There's a contract. He told you. T -t 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 -t. You did. Something wrong. Yes. <laughs> he got caught and couldn't get out of it. If he could, he would have continued to plan E, F, and G. And then he coughs the truth up. Everyone with deep-seated insecurity in their soul also has chronic fear. Why? They're insecure. Wait a minute. And he admits it. I was afraid. They wouldn't like me. Ninety percent of the Christians in America, useless, gutless wonders. Why? They're afraid somebody won't like them. If they do what the Lord actually says and take a stand, half the time or more, you'll be by yourself. Insecure people can't be by themselves. They need somebody running along behind them, patting them on the fanny. <laughs> Patting them on the shoulder, giving them a compliment, building up their deep-seated insecurity. Oh. Samuel, Samuel didn't play that. The Lord told him to do something. He did it to the letter. He didn't care whether you like it or not. Christians don't do that in America. They'll do this, do, 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 but they won't do, 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 do. No, I'm not going to do that. Come on. Insecure people always have fears. Correct. Now, his final method of manipulation. Clunk, he hits rock bottom. They beg. You beg. I did that as a kid. I did it as a kid. You ever seen a kid begging? You're dragging them off to whip them, and they're screaming, Daddy, don't! Daddy, don't! I'm sorry! They're confessing everything from kingdom to come. Right. Saul! Saul went back to his childhood when he got caught. And now he lost everything. There was nothing left to do but beg. Begging. Too late. First Samuel 18. Saul's at it again, boy. He wasn't fired on the spot. No. Jehovah had another king ready to replace him, but that other king wasn't ready. Wasn't ready to go. 
He already had a Moses to deliver the Jews from Egypt. He wasn't ready to go. It took 40 years to get Egypt out of Moses. It takes a lifetime to get a sin out of some Christians. One sin. Unbelievable. David comes on board, starts his training program on how to be king. God's blessing him from pillar to post. And unfortunately, the person with deep-seated insecurity is watching it. Saul. They come back from another battle. Here it is. And the women come out. <laughs> There's a deeper message here, but I don't have the guts to go there. <laughs> The women come out of all the cities and they're cheering. See? They're cheering King Saul. Great. Good idea. Well done. Oops. They're cheering King David more. And he heard it. But it wasn't Saul that heard it. It was really that 10-year-old boy that heard it. He got caught when he was a kid. Insecure. Deep in his soul, he knew he wasn't everything people thought he was. But he had him fooled because he had the cosmetics to go with it. You can fool people with your cosmetics. <laughs> I know. <laughs> See, I, my outfits are incredible, but I am not. I'm trying to fool you. Saul was trying to fool him, but he knew deep inside, hey, I'm not what everybody thinks I am. I'm not the greatest kid that ever lived. I'm not a good king. And these women know it. And they're cheering David more than him. And Saul is angry. And he's hurt. And his insecurity flares up because he now feels inferior to David, the double I. Once you start to feel inferior, insecurities close behind, and fear follows in. Saul is now afraid. It says here, look, he keeps his eye on him from that day on. Can you believe that? Samuel, first chapter 18 for Samuel. It came to pass the next day. Eh? <clears throat> That's why the, the Bible says, if you get mad at somebody, or you lose your temper, or something bad happens, don't go to bed that way. Don't go to bed mad. Fix it before you hit covers. Why? It's carryover. It carries over into the next day. Wow, look at that. It carried over into the next day, and guess what happened? Saul, finally, after all these years, living in insecurity and inferiority, picked up a spirit, just like Christians do. If you keep feeding your inferiority and your insecurity, Sooner or later, you're going to pick up spirits. Mm -hmm. Saul did. Whoa. And this demon fools everybody, just like he's doing in Maricopa County, Arizona. We got charismatics and prophetics running around prophesying, and they think it's God. And they're familiar spirits. Guess what? Demons can prophesy. How do you know that? I just read it. Are you reading this? Yeah. I'm not the only one who can read. <laughs> David doesn't even get it. Okay? Nobody gets it. Suddenly, this demon takes over Saul's personality. Boy, that sounds familiar, doesn't it? You've seen it many times in family members. You've seen it in other people. You've seen it in people at church. All of a sudden, something triggers them a fear or a, an anger incident, something clicks in that person and suddenly they, their personality switches. Oh, yeah. 
Amen. And you're looking right at them. You're going, oh, their eyes got a little darker. Their face got drawn. They stared. There was a, there was a manifestation, a kind of a, but it's subtle. And you notice a personality change. And it sometimes it's like a click. And somebody else is standing there talking to you. Yep. Suddenly somebody's sitting there normal and you say one thing seems to be benign seems to be innocuous click and they're suddenly in a rage Just an instantaneous fire of anger Phew, Like that and people are looking at him go dude. What happened? What was said? How people are trying to figure it out? What'd you do? How did it happen? What happened? What'd you say to him? I didn't say anything <laughs> Hear the people giggling they're thinking about the relatives. <laughs> Don't you see it? The spirit, his personality, clicked, took Saul's personality, which he had spent years nurturing with inferiority and insecurity. Now the demons pumped in jealousy and fear. Over who? The next king, King David. He starts becoming another person. If you keep nurturing inferiority and insecurity, someday you will become another person. Your friends and family won't recognize you. You won't recognize yourself. Suddenly, King Saul is a murderer. He tries to kill him. He throws the javelin at David. Tries to pin him to the wall. David escapes. Why? What follows people that are insecure? He was afraid of King David. Now that's an altered personality. Why? King David had never done anything to him but help him. As Grandpa used to say, some people bite the hand that feeds them. First Daniel 19 Jonathan sees this thing going on he notices his dad has a different personality now sometimes alcohol brings out that altered spirit in the person sometimes drugs do it sometimes stress or pressure and they become another person right in front of your eyes it's almost like a miracle click just like that and that fast Jonathan notices his dad's starting to lose it. He knows why. He's got this deep seated insecurity and he's afraid of his best friend, King David, who has done nothing but help him. 100%. Never did one thing ever to hurt King Saul. Bent over backwards to help him, love him, and respect him. Didn't he? Yes. The other personality doesn't care. Why does the devil use altered personalities in people? Well, several reasons, but one of them is the person on the receiving end doesn't have the discernment to know what's going on. They, in a weird way, think it's that person doing it so they take an offense against the person when it was actually another person doing it. Jonathan tried to get him out of it by using common sense and logic neither of them work on an altered state they won't work. He said, hey, Dad, King David's great. He's always done this and that. What are you doing? What's, what, come on now. Jonathan, he came up for him. 
he was talking to King Saul at a moment when the other personality was not dominating him. Check it out. King Saul, the real King Saul, was talking to his son. And a little bit of truth came in to your child, your parents, someone you love. And they actually received at a certain point in time. And later on, you're talking to somebody else. You know something? I was talking to such and such today, and we had a good conversation. And you know what? He actually, yeah, it seemed to make some headway there. And the devil's playing you. What's he doing to you? Oh, we went over it with Satan. He builds you up. He gets your hopes up so he can chop you down. Later on, that person, the other personality, clicks in again, and the person that thought they had made some headway crashes with them. Didn't we go over that yesterday? I thought we talked about that. You said this and that. You said that and this. Remember that? The altered personality remembers it and buried it. Now he's on the war path again. The real king Saul go, oh, you're right. I'm like, this is crazy. Of course he can live. He's a good guy. Another war. David, gold star, Academy Award. Slaughter in the Philistines. They were so afraid of him, they took off running. He had the anointing for fighting. Guess what? Yeah, there it is again. Years of insecurity and inferiority will ruin your Christian life and leave you spiritually anemic. You can be saved for 15 years and you can't pray your way out of a wet paper bag. You can be saved for 20 years and you can't even pray for your neighbor. It happens all the time. I'm not making any of this stuff up. Why? Insecurity won't allow you to witness to them. You feel inferior. Well, I can't witness as good as the pastor or this person or that person. I don't know. I don't seem to say the right things all the time. I need to go find some worms and eat them and die. <laughs> don't you see this insecurity? The two big eyes, the devil beats everybody up with both of them. He'll wipe your Christian life completely out using it. David's trying to help him again. Look, he's playing for him again, trying to soothe him down. Come to chill it out. Hey, how about this one? Here's Beethoven's fifth. You like that one? <laughs> now, altered personality, spirits, demons, they don't like you playing Beethoven to them. All they want to do is kick your face in. Period. Oh, you got the javelin deal again. And he escaped again. What's Saul like? Typical Christian. Up and down, up and down. You're right, I was wrong, I sinned. Oh, it's the people that stole it. Oh, David's going to live. Where's my javelin? <laughs> Don't you see it? Here's Christianity in America. Everybody doing great, then they're crashing, doing wonderful, taking a dump. Why? Insecurity inferiority leaving you wasted for life Matthew 25 you read the parable of the talents right yes. yes why did the last one do so poorly double lie yeah. yep insecurity and inferiority Oh, the other guys are better investors than I am. Oh, my God. What if I invest and I lose the money? Oh, shoot. I'm afraid now. I feel inferior. I'm not as good as them. Oh, God. What am I going to do? I guess I'll bury it that way. I, I've got it here. I have some talents from God. But if I don't use them, then I'll never fail with them. If I don't use my talents, no one can ever say I look bad. No one can criticize me for using them wrong if I don't use them. So what I'll do is I'll just sit and do nothing.
because I'm too insecure and too afraid. Fear always follows insecurity. Am I going to be all right? Will I go under? What happened? Where, where do I go? What do I do? Oh, my God. I don't feel secure. What? I was afraid, and I didn't use my talents. My sister, she doesn't listen. My sister is... <laughs> top of the line. Pianist. I started out that down that road when I was a kid. Uh, my uh, my parents uh, took me to a piano instructor. What do you call that? Lessons. Yeah. <laughs> That's a true story. The woman's name was Karen. Attractive blonde. I got past the dun 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 had it down and thought I was Tchaikovsky. <laughs> but this piano lesson stuff required homework. Okay? And I didn't have the sense God gave a basket of Italian rocks and I heard my friends playing outside and I was doing that inside dun, 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 and I was out the door. <laughs> my sister stayed with it and learned music off the notes, is that what they call them? There's notes on these sheets. My sister, fantastic. Okay. My sister loaded with double I. My dad, for years, said, Why do you keep looking at the look at you go? You don't need the notes, okay? Just play by ear. You have the ability to do it, you have the skills. Tries it once, goes bad. Ooh. The hitter. Never did it. Never learned to do it. Can't play dun -dun 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 without notes. Can't do it. How the devil do it? He will block your gifts from God like you won't believe when you feed insecurity in your soul. You will be afraid. Oh, God, people are going, my talents, no, I can't develop that talent. I'm, I'm making mistakes. People are watching me. They think I'm a goof. you got to learn to overcome that like I did. Yeah. I get up here every week and I'm teaching. <laughs> I already know it's not going to go well, and I don't care. I just get up here, dump it out on you. You don't like it, you find a dope. And you go out the dope. I don't care. God Almighty, we need some Christians who don't care what the devil says about them. They just don't care. You don't think I can do this? You don't think I can do that? I don't care. I'll do it anyway. I'll fall. I'll get up. I'll learn. Then I'll grow. I quit my lessons with that Karen gal. I quit. My dad has an affair with the piano teacher. <laughs> Breaks up the family and get, they get a divorce. Yeah, put that one in your hat. The devil took me apart, then took the whole family apart.
You give him an open, he'll take it. What happens when you're insecure? You always get a spirit of fear. They always work together. Let me ask you something. On Judgment Day, is this you? I mean, are you going to continue to blow your life for nothing? Really? God Almighty. I wish you young people would go around here and start interviewing some of the people my age or older. You wouldn't believe the stories you'd get, get out of them. Go back to your church and start interviewing some of these old people and listen to the regrets that fall out of their mouths. Listen to the years they wasted when they could have been serving God. That's not even funny. That's not even a joke either. That's a fact. Yeah. Interview them and ask them. Oh, I'm in my 30s. I'm 40s. I'm fine. Hey, you wouldn't believe how fast you're out of your 30s and 40s. You wouldn't believe how many years go by and you can't even believe it anymore. They just fly like that. <laughs> And you wasted them just like that. That guy with the talent on Judgment Day, through fear, insecurity, and inferiority, ends up with nothing for God. Nothing. Don't you understand? Father gave the guy the talent. It's not something you have to manufacture. Once you become a born-again Christian, your gifts and anointing and fruit are downloaded into your spirit, man, because you got the Holy Ghost and He's got everything. That's right. Amen. But He will not force you to develop your talents. And if you have inferiority and insecurity in your soul from childhood, you will leave your talents just like He did. Nothing. You're a nothing. You won't be pulling a King Saul on Judgment Day. They did it. Manipulating. Uh-uh. He tried to do that with Samuel and didn't even work. You think that's going to work? Standing before the throne room? You got to be kidding, man. You have no chance. Saul was insecure. He felt inferior until he became Paul. That's a different Saul, isn't it? Saul is Saul. Yep, we went over this earlier. Short guys sometimes develop the small man syndrome where they got to, as Freud said, overcompensate for their insecurity and inferiority in their souls. So they uh, sometimes become perfectionists. They could become workaholics. They became, become uh, loud and boisterous. They use different methods to overcompensate their personality deficits. Correct? You've met, you've met them many times, haven't you? Of course you do. We all know these people. Paul was that person. He studied harder than anybody. He was the best Pharisee you ever saw. He had the best training. He worked harder than the other guys in class. He got better grades. He was the dominant Pharisee. Why? He was embarrassed. He was insecure. He was, he was short. He became a vicious persecutor of Christians. He became a serial killer. Do you know why people lose their temper and yell at the other person? It's a method of self-protection. What they're doing there is their, their inferiorities are whispering to them, saying, if I dominate this person and control them, I'm going to be safe. So I'm going to get in their face and yell at them. <laughs> they're bluffing. They're bluffing. Behind every screamer, is a scared little boy or girl in there. Why? When they were young, they felt inferior. They felt insecure. I had it when my parents got divorced. I felt insecure. What about my family? What if something happens to my mom? What, what, where am I going to go? What's going to happen? 
When God gives you a promise and doesn't immediately come to pass the way you want it, your old insecurities from your childhood start to flare up in there. Oh my God, God's unreliable. He's not going to, I'm going to end up like Eve. God told me this now, but he was holding out on me. He screwed me, he stabbed me in the back. He didn't give me the right information. Something's wrong. Oh my God. And suddenly your insecurities start to, am I on solid ground here? What happened? Where are you at, honey? What you said to be home at six? What have you been doing? Oh, I had a flat tire. You had a flat tire. Where, where was it at? What happened? What's she really saying? Oh my God, I'm scared again because I'm flashing back to when I was insecure in my childhood. My dad didn't come home, and I'm shaking. Brother Paul in the same boat. Saul. Everybody wanted him. Why? They knew the job would get done. So everybody asked for him. Everybody wanted him. Guess what else? He didn't stay Saul, did he? He became Paulus. Not big enough. He loved it. Paul was the greatest Christian that ever lived. You know why? He got a divine revelation. I'm not good enough. I got to rely on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> oh, man. Uh -huh. What was he doing there? He pulled a fast on the devil. He flipped it on him. Instead of fearing his insecurities, embraced them. Wait a minute. I am insecure. That's good. I can't do this anyway. I need the Holy Ghost. All the lessons this man can teach us are never ending, I believe. Philippians chapter 3, brethren, I do not count myself to have kata lumbano fully received everything I'm driving for. I'm not there yet. I haven't arrived yet. Now, if Paul hadn't arrived yet, what's that say about me? I really haven't arrived yet. I've got to keep going. But this one thing I do, even though I don't have everything I'm working for now, what i got to do is not let my past drag me down. So I'm going to forget about what I did in my past. See what he's saying? I'm just going to continue to reach forth. I'm going to go forward. I don't have it yet. But by faith I see it there. I'm going to let that go and press on there. And do what? Yes. Scopus is what? I don't see everything there, but by faith I believe it's there. Even though it, technically now I can't see it all. It's concealed. Scopus. But at the end of that road is what? Rabian. The award is there. But for me to get there said the greatest Christian in history, I have to release that there. I was little inferior and insecure. I released that. And I only focus on what I'm pressing forward there to get my reward, my prize, which is the high calling of God. In Christ Jesus, my Lord. Check it out. That included the good things he'd done. That giant Holy Ghost revival he had two weeks ago, 
200 people got healed. You know what he was doing? Walking down the other side of the sun and his shadow fell over these. They got healed. I forget those things that are behind me. And I reach for those things that are before me. I reach for the prize of the high calling of God. The Jews whipped him last week. Doesn't matter. I released those things that are behind me. Jews, Romans, heathens, beatings, killings. And I reach forward. You know how to kill insecurity, inferiority? Release it and press forward with your eye on the prize. If you're going forward, this crap isn't a factor anymore. God. I was abused as a child and I'm inferior. Okay, I get that. Let's jump, let's, let's, let's embrace that. Now let's get rid of it and press full. Man, it was a porn addict. Yes, I did. I'm a drug addict. I drink out. This guy's anointed, to say the least. A great piece of scripture. This is unbelievably good. Philippians chapter 3, check this one out. Let us, as many as be teleao, be thus minded. Now, what's that mean? Perfect? No. It means to reach a state of maturity. To reach a state of, of completeness. Not perfection. God's the only person that's perfect. You'll never, I'll never be perfect. But we can fulfill our destiny and reach our level of completeness. Completeness, which is different from yours, and yours is different from yours. You don't compare yourself with other people. Father's called you individually. You don't compare yourself with him. That's a sin. The devil will take you out with your inferiorities and your insecurities. Oh, that person did this and that and said this and that, and they're better. Whoop. Let it go. I forget those things that are behind me. He was being nice. I also forget these idiots. The kooks in your family, the nincompoops at work, the jackasses at the store. I forget those people. I let them go, but I reach forward for the prize. My high calling of God in Christ Jesus, my Lord. This different from yours. Not better, different. Each one has a different calling. Each one has a different value. It's not between you and her. It's not in her business. It's not in her business. Between you and the Lord. If you hold on to your successes too long, the demons will watch you do that and they will start to pump you up. As soon as you start getting pumped up, you are S-C-R-E-W-E-D. <laughs> Whatever that spelled, it was bad. <laughs> you don't want to get puffed up over what you did last week that was good. You want to do something better later, which is that way. See, what I did, the gospel really is the scarecrow in the Wizard of Oz. He went that away. Remember him up there? There. Where's Oz? It's this way. Dude, your life is there. Let it go. You're going that away. Amen. You're wasting your life for no reason. Preach it, Brother Mike. You should be booming. But you're hauling what us counselors used to call baggage. You want to be complete or mature? Check it out. Paul says, here's what happened to me. Here's how I learned this. I got all these great revelations from God. He got more revelations than anybody ever lived. 
He got all these incredible revelations. This guy was loaded with revelations. Loaded. And the Holy Ghost goes, uh oh. I got a Lucifer thing cooking here. I need to fix this. The reason I need to fix this is because I see you 2,000 years from now. I see you. I see you. I want you. So I'm going to have to fix Paul now. You have no idea. You have no idea how you got saved. Not one person here knows. You have no idea the strings Father had to pull to get you saved. You don't even know. Because it happened long before you were around. Years ago, months ago, decades ago. This happened, that happened. Some little miracle happened. You got saved. You think you did it. Ha! The Holy Ghost was hunting for you from day one. He saw you in the womb and said, I want that one. I got to save you. I'm going to have to save Paul first. I got to save Brother Mike 2,000 years from now. So what do I got to do here? Uh-oh, I got to let the devil get a big head. I'm going to fox him again. That's what he always does. Whenever the devil's kicking your face in, behind the scenes, the Holy Ghost outfoxed him. You just don't see it. We don't see it. But he already did it. He's already got the devil by the throat, and he doesn't know it. Neither do you. He's already planned your escape and your retribution. That's right. He says, lest I should be exalted above measure, Paul says. Why? Because of all the revelations in his past. Not future ones. Am I explaining this right? Yes. Yes. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. What was fall thorn in the flesh? Why do you say that? Jews. The Jews knew exactly what he was talking about. Gentiles don't. Gentiles are confused. Jews are not. As soon as they heard that, click, they knew exactly what it was. It was other idiots. <laughs> They knew it. Gentile, Gentiles don't know what that is. They're massively confused. They argue it in Bible study all day. Jews go, what are you talking about? I know who that is. That's the morons down the street. That's the heathen. That's, that's people. They're crazy. <laughs> it's right here. The thorns of the flesh. Numbers. Ezekiel. They were the nations around Israel constantly causing them nothing but trouble. Guess what happened to Paul? Guess what happened to Paul? No guessers? Angelos, a angel, a fallen angel, okay? I get demons a a hassling me all the time, low-level demons, because I don't amount to much. Paul didn't get demons. He got fallen angels. <laughs> now that's an anointing. Fallen angels. Fallen angels, colophizo. That's what it means. Anybody here ever boxed in the past? I used to be a boxer. I never lost a fight with a heavy bag. Have you ever? <laughs> you should have seen me. I, I was vicious. Vicious. I was killing it. Yeah. Oh, I'd do a heavy bag in. You wouldn't believe it. This angel came along to pound on him, but how did he do it? The same way demons do it to us. They use other people. Amen. And he allowed it to happen for what reason? To save our souls. Paul had to be saved. And he knew, the Holy Ghost knew, as if his revelations in his past, if he didn't learn to let that go and just only reach for the cries ahead of him he was going to get a boop. who wouldn't get a big head Can you imagine the tapes and books he could sell he made Kenneth Copeland look like a pauper <laughs> He 
he'd have six heliports on his mansion instead of one. Four bowling alleys in the bedroom. Of... Listen, a fallen angel beaten Paul up using other people, thorns in the flesh. Come on. Why? To keep him. Thank you. And Paul, so sick of it, and who wouldn't be, who wouldn't be, I wouldn't criticize him in the world, he, one of the things he went through, I couldn't make it through. One of them. Sure, he went to the Lord, said, Lord, please, get me out of here. <laughs> Who wouldn't? What was the thorns? He says it in 1 Corinthians 11. He actually audits the thorns. There they are. Check this out. Working his fingers to the bone. Whippings, people dying all around him, people trying to kill him, Jews whipping the stuffing out of him five times, Jews beating the crap out of him three times. <laughs> Don't you get the thorn in the fire? Aren't you getting it? Doesn't isn't this has got to be sinking somewhere? Jews, Jews stoned him to death one time. What you sow, you reap. He stoned Stephen to death. <laughs> You cheat on your wife? Uh -huh. It's going to come back to haunt you on your next marriage. She'll cheat on you. The demons keep track of that stuff, fool. <laughs> it's the law of the spirit world. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Paul got stoned. Shipwrecked three times. Are you kidding me? My oh, gosh, I got scared one time. I went on a cruise ship. <laughs> I asked my father-in-law, are you sure this thing will stay up? <laughs> Constantly moving around like a gypsy. That wears you out. Constant traveling, that's exhausting. That's why these phony TV preachers all want jets. They want jets with cots and creature comforts and showers and spas and saunas in the jet. Why? Because traveling is tiring. And if you're a TV preacher, you ain't supposed to get tired. You're supposed to collect money from people. <laughs> Dangers in rivers. The guy's stuck in rivers. Check it out. One river would be the end for me. I say, hey, I'm not coming back here. <laughs> Dangers from thieves. Dangers from Jews, he said. Dangers from the heathen. Holy smoke. Dangers in the cities. It's unbelievable. Dangers in the desert, he said. Dangers in the ocean. In the ocean? Are you crazy? My missionary trip would end one trip to the ocean. <laughs> I'm, I'm going back home. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, I love pygmies in Ghana. I want them to get saved. You're dumping me in the ocean with, with sharks? <laughs> Homie's on a plane for Phoenix. <laughs> Not Paul, man. He's going to the next one. Come on now. Why? Because he learned to f let that go. He kept reaching there. He was humble. He kept going. Seeing the ingredients, there's an ingredient. There's a puzzle here I'm trying to paint for you. Maybe I'm not doing a good enough job. Look at this, number 16. Whoa, that's, a, that's around today. Fake Christians running amok in the church. Total exhaustion, he says. Of, are you kidding? Of course he Who wouldn't be? Sleepless nights? No kidding. Hunger and Hunger all the time? Thirsty all the time? Fastings? Cold weather, nakedness, constant distractions from Christians. That's the worst one. He said, one time I had to swim for my life. They had to lower me out the window in a basket. One time that happened to me. My mission trip's over. I'm not getting hung out a window two stories in a basket. I'm done. <laughs> now, Brother Paul, now, 24 thorns he lists in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. What were they? All people. As soon as he made that thorn in the flesh statement, every Jew knew exactly what he was talking about. You're crazy neighbors. <laughs> And then Paul itemized, he audited the whole thing right there. 
Oh, I thought Paul, I think he was blind. Oh, he had hemorrhoids. It wasn't a medical condition, <laughs> fool. He listed exactly what it was. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The Lord says, Paul, I can't answer that prayer. You know what he did? He, he forgot that prayer. He forgot it. God didn't answer it. He forgot it. I forget those things which are behind me. I reach for those things that are before me. There he goes. My grace is sufficient for you because my strength. Damn, Paul grew up insecure. He grew up inferior. He was short. Everybody else is Duncan. He's down here looking at him. Yeah, that's, that's posterized. Nobody likes to get posterized. Paul loved it. He saw it. In the spirit world, it's the opposite from the natural world. Paul saw it. Wait a minute. That's an asset if I have nothing. If I can't do anything, that's a blessing. Not something to be scorned. Not something to be ashamed of. I'm just going to release that and look for my award. My prize is right down here. I'm not going to rely on my own strength. It doesn't matter I'm short. The Holy Ghost is big. He's got everything I need. Paul became the history's greatest Christian because he relied nothing on himself and totally on the Spirit of the Lord. There it is. My strength, God's strength in you can win it. Father's wisdom in you will win it. Yes. Amen. The anointing of the Holy Ghost will win it. It's not about you and me. And then you will be what? It will be mature. See it? Same Greek word. Not perfect. No, that's a poor translation. That was a 1600 translation. Mature, see? Not a baby on milk. You mature on meat. Yes, yes, yes. How do you mature? By doing what? Embracing his inferiority and his insecurity. Asthenia is weaknesses. Physical weaknesses, mental weaknesses, emotional weaknesses. Don't you see it? They are actually your assets. And for years, you thought they were your liabilities. You moaned over them. You regretted them. You whined over them. You should have been rejoicing over them. Thank God I can't do anything. Now he's got to. Paul got it, saints of God. Don't you see it? Paul saw past the lies of the devil. He got it. Weaknesses, asthenia, are your assets, not your liabilities. There was given unto me a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should become exalted. As soon as you become exalted, like Satan, you lose everything. He lost everything. He ends up in the lake of fire. He was on the mountain of God. Now that's a fall. So what will I do, Paul said? What's he telling the, house, the uh, uh, deliverance center tonight? What's he telling us tonight? Gladly. He's got a big smile on his face. I will what? Glory in my weaknesses. Yes. Glory in them. Is he nuts? Is he on crack? No. He sees how the spirit world operates. He knows what the devil does. He knows about inferiority and insecurity, how it ruins your life. He turned it around and made it an asset and embraced it. Trusting only in God's security yes. and God's power. Yes. Yes. 
knowing he had no power, he wanted what? Dunamis, the supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. Paul left his power behind. I forget those things that are behind me. What I used to be, short, weak, skinny, unathletic. I don't, I don't care anymore. My degrees from the Hebrew school of literature. I had all these degrees. I had all this money. I had a wonderful family. I have the big shot of the synagogue. I left that behind. Everything about me, I left behind. Now what I do, I reach for the prize. My prize. I let it go. Because God's grace is sufficient for me. Yes, amen. Huh? He's like a fisherman towing a boat. He just leaned over, pulled out the fillet knife, cut the tow line. God's begging you tonight. Cut your tow line. Yes. Cut it. See all them people in that boat you're dragging around? We call it baggage. Oh my God, these people hurt me. They hate me. Oh, they divorced me. Oh, they left me. <laughs> you're not getting it are you you better be getting it that boat's full of crap and you're hauling it just just turn around okay you gangster pull out the switchblade <laughs> see ya cut these people loose cut those regrets loose cut your childhood loose it's not you anymore. What happened to King Saul? He never cut the toe line. The old King Saul ended up falling on his sword. Whoa. I don't want my power, Paul said. I left that behind. I want Holy Ghost dunamis power. <laughs> Yeah, I cut the tow line so that the power of God could rest upon me. See, I don't need a degree from the Hebrew school. I need the Holy Ghost, so I'll just walk in front of you so my shadow can heal you right there. The shadow healing. How you like a shadow healing? There you go, take that. Where'd you get that? In the Hebrew? I look. That went out to sea. I don't have any degrees from the Hebrew school. Had enough of it. Cut. Somebody's going to get this Bible study and turn into a gigantic monster Christian. Somebody. I don't know who it is, but somebody's going to get this and just blow it up. 1 Corinthians 12, therefore I take what? Are you kidding me? Paul's got to be back on crack. Are you nuts? No, he's not nuts. He understands how the Holy Ghost works. What the Holy Ghost does seems nuts to us, but it's Perfectly sensible to the Son of God. That's exactly how it works. I, Udukeo, I'm this is great. I'm I've got weaknesses, I got failures, I got insecurities, I got I'm a, I can't do this and I can't do that. Great! That's a that's wonderful. I have no problem with that. That's great. I, yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. I know this sounds nuts. It's not. Look what he does. Paul then goes into the bonus round. <laughs> he goes past just his weaknesses, asthenia, and he goes through a laundry list of other horrible things <laughs> that we go to therapists over. <laughs> we need counseling. We need somebody to support us. I need somebody to pet my fanny. Peace out. <laughs> Listen. Use your anointing. Reach over the boat. Cut that off and let that boat go. Just let it drift out to sea. Where's it going? You don't care. Reproaches. Look at that. People, people saying negative things about you. Oh, I'm hurt. Oh, my God. That's your deep-seated inferiority flaring up again. It's your insecurity from your childhood. Don't you see it? Because you care what that other person thinks. It's the first red flag. You've got it.
It happened to me years ago. Yeah. Man, I want, to, I want to go in the ministry. I was sitting at Burger King. Had these delusions of grandeur. I've been, I've been watching TV. And then all of a sudden, my old insecurities started bubbling up over my Burger King coffee. And I thought, God, I don't, I don't know how to preach. I don't know how to teach. When I started to feel inadequate, inferior. Monday night I went to the prayer meeting and I had this funny thought pop in my mind. It just floated in there. I wasn't sure where it came from. You know, when you're a new Christian, you're not sure where stuff comes from. And it sounded like this <clears throat> Who cares? <laughs> and that prayer meeting, Monday night, years ago, is why I'm standing right here. Amen. Who cares? That's right. You don't care what they think of you. You cut that thing. Oh, you have needs? You don't have everything met and handed to you on a silver platter? You cut that thing. You don't need to have all your needs right now because your Heavenly Father meets your needs continuously whenever you need them. It's His job to do it, not yours. Paul cut his ability to meet his own needs and began to reach for the prize here of the high calling of God. persecutions distresses I'm what I'm taking pleasure in them don't you see he flipped it on the devil Christians get this stuff and they go into the tank why they never flipped it on him flip it on him play it back to him Paul put the shoe on the other foot. Instead of sinking in despair over all this crap the devil was dumping on him, Paul embraced it because he knew this incredible truth. I am so happy I'm weak and I can't do it. Because that's going to generate a miracle. The Bible doesn't say this and I'm making it up myself, but Paul was addicted to miracles. That's why he got rid of himself. As long as yourself is involved, you get no miracles. Yep, your business is going under. Yep, your marriage is cracking. Yeah, you're gonna get sick. Yeah, why? You're trusting in man. Trusting in yourself, trusting your skills, trusting your background. No, hey, you want all that stuff fixed? Lean over the boat. <laughs> Let it go. Cut it. Why cut it? Oh my God. When I'm weak, see that? When I am weak, notice this. Then he is strong. What's the greatest gospel song ever, ever uh, created? Anybody know number one gospel song in history? Anybody know what it is? Let's sing it together. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Don't you get it? Yeah. Oh, God. Cut that thing. Cut it. You want a prophecy? Oh, you think you want some prophetic? Okay. Thus saith the Lord. Cut it. There you go. Take that home. Go on. You went to a prophetic seminar, did you? Oh, great. Well, who's got the... Somebody get the offering bucket. We're going to start charging. Bring that thing in. You want prophetic? I'm telling you in Jesus' mighty name, just cut it. Cut yourself. Let it go. Let your childhood go. Let your crazy relatives go. I, Let your failures go. Let your past go. Let it go. Cut it. Then you will be strong. 
If you hold on to yourself, you will sink like the rest of them. You'll be gone. Let's close. First Corinthians chapter 1. I've been sharing some stuff tonight that makes absolutely no human sense. It appears humanly crazy. I agree. It's nuts. I thought it was nuts when I first read it, when I came to God. I admit it. This doesn't make any sense. I wasn't raised that way. I don't think that way. I had not renewed my mind. If you do not renew your mind on God's word, none of this stuff's make a lick of sense. None of it makes sense. And this makes the least sense of anything. God, who? That God, the real God, has done what? What did he do? He chose. Oh, I thought I did. <laughs> Dude, you don't even know what went on behind the scenes for years or months or decades to get you saved. You don't even know it. You don't know. You don't know. You don't even know how you got saved. Oh, yeah, I got saved. I got saved to Billy Graham. This guy walked up. No, you think you got saved there. You don't know how you got there from a year ago, from five years ago. The Holy Ghost has been watching you from day one. And he chose you. Why? You used to be a fool. There it is. God chose fools. <laughs> Lord Jesus, come tonight because you've got plenty to pick from here. <laughs> we are ready to go. I've been up here for over an hour acting like a fool. <laughs> Lord, look at this. Why? Human wisdom bothers him. Yes. Because it's full of pride and arrogance. Yes. So the Lord goes, hey, I'm going to choose foolish looking people, sounding people, acting people. I'm going to choose them myself. He chose you. He chose you. Oh, what about all the superstars? No, I'm going to deliberately choose the nothings and nobodies. Dude, please, just think for a second, just humor me. Just make a little list in your laundry list in your mind right now of the three or four things that are really bad about you. Just think about it. Maybe you're too insecure and inferior to do that. I'll do it for you. <laughs> I'll help you. You know, your looks, marginal. Body, terrible. Body smell, super bad. <laughs> breath, oh man, breath, oh, take the chrome off a bumper. <laughs> Family history, bunch of losers. Childhood, sucked. Money situation, up and down, weak. What did I just do? I listed off several things about you personally that is absolutely wonderful. You should be rejoicing and if you fit into the category of a total loser, <laughs> you are in the best spot you've ever been in. <laughs> You first. <laughs> yeah, I know some of you are so insecure, you're fighting me off right now. You want me to come up and point to you? Do you? As a blessing for you? We're charging you to get out of here, so you might as well let me do it. Yeah, you're a loser. So are you. You're a failure. You, you, 
Yeah, you're ugly. You're stupid. You're fat. You're ugly. Nobody likes you. Your personality sucks. Yeah. Okay, give me the money. What was I doing there? Dumping out blessings on your life, fool. You don't understand. God chose you first. Oh, I'm an addict. First. God, I'm a stinking alcoholic. You're first. Amen. I was molested as a kid. I'm sick. You! You're first! Yes. Come on. Praise God. Thank you. I just done you a favor. Thank you. You know what it was? You don't know. I just removed from every person in this room every satanic excuse you ever came up with for your life you have no more excuses Amen. I am a thief I stole every excuse you got you don't have any anymore you my age oh God I'm no Nice try. You don't have any excuses anymore. Let's pray. Father God, I've done the best I could tonight, Lord. I'll tell you that. And what I do up here is never good enough. It's, I don't, I don't want it. I want to learn like Paul. I want to be like Paul. I don't have any skills or abilities. But, by God's grace, each person, each of us, may be having no talents or skills or abilities. By faith, we can all do our best. That's what we all have. Some people can do more than others. Others can do less. It doesn't matter. They're all chosen by God. I've been chosen by God. No, I never learned how to teach or preach. I was chosen by God. I had a bad childhood so do my friends here many people my friends here had a bad childhood worse than mine many of them had drunks for parents drunker than my parents there's always somebody else worse off than somebody else but it doesn't matter anymore it doesn't matter they were chosen and those liabilities those failures the alcohol the drugs the porn the broken families the molestations all the bad things that have happened to me Lord all these things are now my assets these things, Father, give me compassion for others who struggle with them. Amen. Why? I want to be like Brother Paul, Lord. I want to turn the tables on the devil. I want to put the shoe on the other foot. I want him to pay and take a beating instead of collecting and dishing them out. That's what I want, Lord. And tonight, the two big weapons the devil has, by faith I'm decreeing it, they will crumble in this room tonight insecurity inferiority dies in this room tonight and those people who crush those evil spirits those two demons that torture people's lives we will drive them out by God's Word and the power of the Holy Ghost and when those things are gone insecurity and inferiority that Christian Lord when they leave this place will be a brand new person and they unlike the most Christians in America will become overcomers in Christ in Jesus mighty name amen 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 youtubers do not click that computer off we're going right to our prayer prayer line and our altar call here I'll lead you through your deliverance in just a couple of minutes, okay? Do not click that thing off. Anybody over here with a double I, you were raised as a child in a dysfunctional family. You got insecurity. You got inferiority. It's plagued you all your life. You've always felt deficient. You felt second best. You felt like a doormat. You felt useless. You felt like a failure. Come up here and see me right now. We want to pray for you. Get out of your chair, please, and come up here. If you're okay and you're good, you're dismissed. We love you. Thank you. Remember the offering buckets are on the doors now. All the doors have an offering bucket. Thank you for your donations. God bless you. Love you.
Come right up here. Insecurity and inferiority. You're awesome. Love you. Glad you're back. Miss you. Come right up here. Inferiority. Insecurity. You grew up with it. You were a kid. Okay? You got a master's degree. Like me. You got a doctor's degree. You got, you've got successes. Human successes. But you still feel insecure. You still feel inferior. Even though you're successful. Okay? Yes, that... You wouldn't believe how many people have insecurity and inferiority. Listen to me carefully, YouTubers. Warren Buffett is the greatest stock market investor that ever lived. This guy is a financial genius. Do you know he's as insecure as a six-year-old boy? Every time he talks or says something, he giggles. Have you ever, listen to me carefully, have you ever talked to somebody and everything they say and then they giggle after it. Yes. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever seen that? Yes. That little giggle on Warren Buffett, one of the richest men in the world, the greatest businessman that ever lived. This guy's number one. Everybody will tell you that. I'm not making that up. This guy's the best there is. Ever. Ever. He is as insecure as a sixth grader. Every time he talks. Have you ever seen him interviewed? Have you? Have you? He giggles after every sentence he says, have you ever seen him? Mm -hmm. He giggles. That little giggle comes from his childhood when he was scared as a little boy, scared of his dad, scared of the whippings. Don't you understand? You can, have, you can be the richest person there is and the most educated person there is and still have and still have that ugly eye and the other eye in your soul. It hides in the soul and the devil will use it against you to keep you from filling, fulfilling your destiny. He will steal your anointing from you. He will rob you of what's rightfully yours. And you can have all the money in the world and still sit there, a scared little boy. If you don't believe me, watch him, watch him when he's interviewed. Watch him. He's a very insecure person. Warren Buffett. Check it out if you don't believe me. It's in the soul. It's in his soul. None of you here, none of us here, added up, would make a pimple on Warren Buffett's foot financially. Every, everybody in this town couldn't match him. And he's a scared little boy. From his dad in his childhood. He's scared. Why? Inferiority and insecurity always breed fear. And fear paralyzes the person and doesn't allow them to fulfill their destiny spiritually. They may have all the education in the world. They may have all the money in the world. That's not the Holy Ghost. He's got something far greater for you. The Holy Ghost got something big for you. It's not money, fame, and fortune. All that crap disappears soon. It's not looks. You lose that in only a few years. If you don't believe it, look at me. Look at, look at these older people. Yeah, we don't look too good now. Listen. <laughs> looks fade. Money fades. All this human stuff fades. The Holy Ghost has got something for you for eternity. He's the man that saved Paul's life. He allowed that fallen angel to beat on him. The fallen angel thinks he's cutting a fat hog. Oh, he's proud. Look, I'm beating up this giant Christian. Yeah. The whole thing backfired right in his face. Praise God. And tonight you're going to make the devil take it in his face too. Yes. You've had it. Yes. You're going to reach over that boat and you're going to cut that tow line. God. You're going to let your childhood go tonight. Yes. Yes. You're going to let your ex-wife and ex-husband, you're letting yes. them go. All of them, all four of them, all five, whatever they are, you're going to let them go tonight. Amen. Your ex-boyfriend, your ex-girlfriend, that beating you took as a kid, that molest molestation you faced when you were young, you're going to cut it tonight. You're going to lean over the boat and cut that thing. Amen. Robert, right? Amen. They're going to cut it now. now in Jesus' name. Come on, now close your eyes now. Let's enter in now. The Holy Ghost stand here. He's ready. He's past ready. He was ready long before I started talking. Come on now. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, I saw that Bible study on Brother Paul. I never saw my liabilities and weaknesses as an asset before. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. That's clicked in my spirit. That's clicked in my spirit. My soul was weak. But tonight my spirit, man, 
just took a jump. I felt it when I was looking at those precious scriptures. That's God's holy word. That's not Brother Mike. That's the word of God. That's got nothing to do with Mike. That's, right. That's the Holy Spirit writing divinely inspired words about the man of God, the great Apostle Paul. And tonight, Lord, I'm going to repent of living in my weaknesses and my inferiorities and my insecurities from my child. And I'm going to repent of it right this second. Right now, in Jesus' name. Come on. Let's repent of it. Dear, dear God, I'm so sorry for what's happened. I'm so sorry I kept feeling this way and thinking this way and embracing these lies from Satan. I am so sorry for what I've done. I see it now. The Word of God is clear. I need to release my past. I need to forget those things that are behind me. I need to reach for those things that are before me. I need to reach for the prize of the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And I'm going to do it right now. No more self-pity. No more pity parties. No more focusing negatively on my assets, which are, which are my weaknesses and my failures. They're really my assets. And I'm going to do it right this second. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to do it right now. Pray harder, sir. Come on. Pray harder. Come on, sweetheart. Pray harder. Pray harder, honey. Don't stand there and pray. Pray harder. Push your way in. Yeah, your failures are your assets, man of God. Your failures are your assets. Come on, sweetheart. Stop it. Stop focusing on your weaknesses like they're bad. They are not bad. They are good. Stop it right now. Stop it. Stop doing that. Stop it. Stop it. I said stop it. Stop it. Your weaknesses are your assets. Receive them in Jesus' mighty name. Your weaknesses are your assets. Push it. Push it right now. Push it. Lord Jesus, save me. Lord Jesus, help me. I command the spirit of infirmi infirmity to come out of my body. I command this sickness to leave me right now. In the name of Jesus, pornography, go! Come out right now! Insecurity, I command you in the name of Jesus. Insecurity for my mother and my father. Come out! Come out right now! Demon of rejection, I command you, come out of me! Get out of my mind! Get out of my soul! I've been chosen by God! How dare you run me down! Come on, man of God, fight for it! Fight for your life! Pray harder! Pray harder. Come on now. I command these negative thoughts to come out. I command these lies to be bound in Jesus' name. Get out of my body right now. Go. Business failures. Relationship failures. They're not liabilities. They're my assets. I repent of it. Now! Go! Come out! Come out of there! Get out of my head and stop lying to me! Stop lying to me! Get out of there! Rejection! Self hatred! Lost! Get out of my body right now! I am not a loser! Pity party! Feeling sorry for myself! I command it to go! Feeling sorry for myself is a cancer! Come out! Right now! Right now! Satan lose your hold! I forget those things that are behind me! I reach for those things that are before me! I reach for the prize of the high calling of God in Jesus Christ my Lord! My asset is the Holy Ghost and His mighty power, not my education. Get out of there. Childhood and rejection. Come out right now. Low self-esteem. Come out right now. Compensating for education. Come out right now. Get out of my body right now. Kundalini. Come out of there. Church demons. Kundalini. Release the woman of God. Come out. Let her go. Come out of there, you pervert. He is not a pervert. You are. Come out now. Unbelief and doubt. I command you to come out. Out. Out of my body right now. And Jesus said, out. Out. Let me go, Satan. 
every ugly man that ever touched me or lied to me or used me or manipulated me leaves me tonight. Every one of them. Every ugly man. Every demon infected man that ever touched my body comes out tonight. Let me go. Satan, let me go. I command you. I command you in Jesus' mighty name. Let me go. I told you to let me go. Inferiority. Come out of me. Insecurity. Come out of me. Right now. You get out of my body right now. All these bad men. Users. Users. Come out. Users. Using me. Come out now. Every boy. Every boy. All of them. Users. Flattery. Flattery. Flattery is a sin. Come out in Jesus' name. Go. Come out in Jesus' mighty name. Go. Low self-esteem from my childhood. Fear of failure. Get out of my body right now. Go. Fear of failure. Come out. Fear of failure. Come on. I command insecurity. Get out of that body right now. Go in Jesus' name. Go by the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name. Insecurity. Inferiority. You are living a life of delusions. Come on, just repent of it. It's a trick of the devil. He wants you to be insecure. Then he wants you to be afraid. Repent of it. I repent of these lies in my mind. Now, I repent of it right this second. Satan, I command you to let me go. Just let me go right now. In the name of Jesus, I command you to let me go. Let me go right now. Come on. Let me go right now. Let me go right now. Let me go right now. In the name of Jesus. Low self-esteem from childhood. Low insecurity from my marriage, from my parents, from my spouse. Insecurity. I command you, go! Go now! Insecurity from my finances. Insecurity from my ugly body. I hate my body. I don't like my looks. Dysmorphia. I bind your power. Come out right now. Dysmorphia. I command you in the name of Jesus. Dysmorphia. I bind your power. Self-hater. Self-hater. Self-condemner. Condemnation. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Self-condemnation. Self-condemnation. Believing lies. Let me go. Self-condemnation. Go. Get him out of there. Negative thoughts. Lies. Negative thoughts about my husband. Saying negative things about my husband. This demon feeding off what I think and what I say. I'm repenting right now. Stop. 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 Insecurity. I command you. Stop. There it is. It's insecurity. You lift off of this woman of God. You let the woman of God go. Insecurity. Low self-esteem. Feeling inferior. I repent of the sin of comparing myself with others. Comparing myself with others is a horrible sin. Am I spiritually as good as them? Am I? Do I have the Bible knowledge they have? Am I as good a Christian as they are? That is the sin. Stop it. Stop comparing yourself with somebody else. You will end up with nothing. Paul said we do not compare ourselves with those who compare themselves among themselves. No. Come on. You should repent of it. Just repent of it. I hate my body, Brother Mike. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm this. I'm that. Repent of it. Repent of it. Your body will be gone soon. Your body will be gone soon. Your inner man will never die. You will carry your inner man into eternity. You will get a new body in glory. Repent of it. Repent of it. I command dysmorphia to come out of you right this second. Come on. Come on. Let it go. Let it go. I command you, you rotten devil. Let it go. 
Let me go. Satan, I'm telling you, I'm not asking you. Streamers, listen to me. Put your hand on your body and use commands and speak directly to the demons. Speak directly to the demons. I command the demon that gives me negative thoughts, lies, come out. Talk directly to the demon. That's what Jesus did. He talked directly to the demons. He said, come on, ladies. You committed adultery and you picked up a spirit from some guy. Okay, speak right to that guy. What was his name? Bob, Harry, Larry, Dijon. What was his name? That demon that came from your old boyfriend or your ex-husband. Speak directly to it, just like Jesus did. And tell that thing by the authority of the Word of God. By the, by the power of the Holy Ghost. I command you to come out of my body right now. Now. Come out of my body now, I said. Come out right now, I said. Go now. Come out now. Come out now. Fear. That's it. Fear. Come out now. Come on. Just get him out of there. Go. I command this evil spirit that causes me to eat for comfort and eat when I'm nervous. That's a spirit of fear. I bind your power. I want you out now. Come out now. Come out of my body now. Take a breath of love. Come out right now. Come out of her. Come out of there. Fear. Fight. 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 Fear. Come out. Lust for food. Come on. Right now. You're not going to kill me with diabetes, high blood pressure. You're not going to do it. You're not going to give me a heart attack. I bind your power. I'm a stroke. I command the thought of a stroke to come out of there. Demon of stroke. You come out of that head right now. Stroke spirit. I bind your power. Infirmity spirit. Go. Come out. I say come out. Go now. Do not pray. Do not pray. Praying doesn't work with demons. Praying does not work with demons. You take authority and you push them out. I came down here for my poor thing tonight, but now I just want the fire. I want the fire. I want the fire of the Holy Spirit. Of course you do, because you got a good heart. Take a big breath. Big breath. Breathe. Holy Spirit, come in. Come on in. Let your tears go. Come on. Let them go. The Bible says the Lord is nigh unto those who have a broken heart. And he saves those who have a contrite spirit. You have that. Let your tears go. Go. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let your tears go. Come on. Come on. Just pray harder. Come on, sweetheart. What are you thinking right now? Nothing. You're thinking of nothing? Oh, that's very bad. Come on. Lord Jesus. Go! How come you came down here? I don't know. When you said it's free, I was like, just maybe, but no. You're not sure? No. Are you okay? Oh, yeah. Thank you. All right. One person down here tonight is okay. Pray for this girl here. What's wrong with you, sweetheart? What was that? What's wrong with you? What do you need? I just need, um, my, um, there's just like a lot, like I got like just a tag, I kind of opened my cart, so like whenever I did something wrong, like a ball of things, like literally like on walls and... What, what's bothering you? What's bothering me? The most important one is the depression part. Like they attend me. You, do you have depression? Come out of my body. Yeah, that's what you said? Yeah, like it's been like attacking me like this whole past season. I, th I, th I thought I held it last season, but I guess I didn't held it completely. So, now, what causes it? I guess like the whole like loneliness or like I'm like not I'm not good I'm not like good enough. Because, like, oh, you think you're not good enough? Yeah. Okay. The, 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 did you see that that's a complete lie, a total fabrication, that you're not good enough? Did, did, you're, you're believing lies, and so that's the first one. You ready? Father, in the name of Jesus, I repent of disobeying your word and believing lies. I'm not supposed to be listening to lies from demons. I'm supposed to believe your word, and the Bible says that you have chosen me with all my faults and all my failures and my weaknesses and those are actually my assets not my liabilities and I've been listening to demons I run myself down I feel insecure 
I live by feelings instead of by faith. I'm going to repent right now. I repent. I'm so sorry for what I did. I repent of it right now. Go ahead. I don't have depression. The Spirit has given me that. That's the spirit of heaviness. I command that thing to come out of me in the name of Jesus. And I repent of listening to lies and negativities about me. That's a sin. I repent of it right now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. You believe lies and negativity about yourself? You believe lies and negativity? That's what King Saul did. He ended up dead. He ended up dead. Come on. Just repent of it. Repent of it. Repent of it. Get out of me right now. You get out of it. You get out. Running get myself out. down, being hard on myself. I repent of it. Are you hard on yourself? That's a sin. The Holy Ghost is not hard on you. He likes you. What's his name? Charlie. Charlie? Oh, good. Now, you ready? The Bible says in Matthew chapter 5. Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who despitefully use you. Charlie put a curse on you, and now we're going to do it. Let's do it. Father God, I bless Charlie right now. I ask you to hunt him down wherever he is. I ask you to put your hands on him. I ask you to bless him. I ask you to forgive him for doing that to me. And I release every thought in my soul, any negative emotions or feelings I have for him. I release it now. Right now. Charlie, I command you and your curses and your demons to come out of me. Did you use the baby? All of them. What triggered it? All of it. I worked with him and he's obsessed over me. Like you worked with him? I went and he developed a crush on you? Yeah. Like he downloaded all my pictures. He downloaded all my pictures. He got yeah. on Facebook. He got some hair on my personnel. He got to get mine. He'll get a binding spell. Okay. Uh, Lord, I want you, what's your name? Susie. All right, Lord, I want you to give Susie the gift of faith right now to pray hard for Charlie and bless him. And go. I forgive him for everything he did. The demons are doing it. It's not Charlie. They're using Charlie to get to me. I do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's actually a spirit in Charlie's brain that has an obsession with me. It's not Charlie. They took him when he was young. He was hurt and wounded as a boy. The demons took him. Now the demons are using him against me. And I see it through the discernment of God's word. I do not wrestle against flesh and blood. It's not Charlie. It's principalities. It's powers. It's spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. It's the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's my enemy. And so I am going to bless Charlie and forgive him. And I'm going to take authority over his demons right now and command them to cease and desist their work. I command you, Charlie demons, stop. I command you, Charlie demons, stop. Jesus name. Go now. Go. Get out of it. Come out right now. Go. Go. Right now, go. Go. Unbelief and doubt. Come out. Unbelief. Doubt. Go. Fear, go. Fear. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Get out of that body right now. Come out of it faster. Come out faster. Satan, lose your hold and come out faster. You rotten devil, I hate your guts. Come out. 
Come out right now. Keep yelling. Keep yelling. Come on. Come out. All of it. All of it. Lust for food. Out. Inferiority. Out. Insecurity. Out. Now. Come out of me. Negativity. Out. Out. Negativity. Come out of me. Critical spirit. Criticizing people. Running them down. Nitpicking them. I nitpicked people and the demons told me it was discernment. It's not discernment. You're a nitpicker. You got a critical spirit. Repent of it. Get out of there. Go, go, go. Come out. Come out. Come out right now. Now in Jesus' name. Go. Come on. Sweat him. Come out. Sweat him. Satan. Loose your hole. Come on, saints of God. Step into your anointing. Let's go. Step out. Step in. Come on. Your anointing is being blocked by negative thoughts in your mind. Just repent of it. Unbelief and doubt blocks your anointing. Fear will block your anointing. Criticizing others will block your anointing. Criticizing others will block your anointing. Criticizing yourself will ruin you spiritually. Come on, just repent of it. Satan, I bind your power by the authority of the Word of God. Put your hand on your body if you need to be healed. Where's your pain at? Where's your pain at? Put your hand right where your pain is. Right where your pain is. Spirit of infirmity, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I was healed on the cross of Calvary by his bruises and his stripes I am healed and I command this pain and this spirit of pain to come out of my body right now come out come out making excuses low self esteem making excuses repent of it now just confess it but just like this Lord I'm sorry I make excuses for my behavior, for my thoughts, for my attitude. I, I make excuses for drinking, using drugs, watching porn, overeating. I got an excuse for everything. Well, tonight, I'm going to throw that book of excuses into the fire of hell. I command my excuses to burn in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. I command it to burn. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. No more excuses. You got more excuses than a gutless coward. You know who has excuses? Cowards. Cowards live, live with insecurity and excuses. Cowards. A coward lives on excuses. Well, tonight you're going to burn that stinking black book. Burn it. No more excuses. No more excuses. Repent of it now. Come on, ladies. Let's go. All the women talking to you ladies. When you were younger, you hoard yourself out. Come on, guys. You used to be a player. All the men used to be a player. When Ladies, when you were young, you were you acted like a whore. And when you did that, you picked up a spirit of whoredom, adultery, fornication. Come on, guys. Those are unclean spirits of sexual perversion. And they entered your body, and you still have them. You might have switched your perversion now over to something else, but it's still the same demon. Come on, put your hands on your stomach and your chest. Unclean spirits are normally in the torso area. Put your hand there. Come on, if you were a player or you were you slept with a lot of people when you were young, you're not doing it now, you repented of it. But when you were young, you needed love, you needed to overcome that spirit of rejection, you hoard yourself out, 
it felt good for a little bit, and then hell came to breakfast. Come on. You picked up a spirit from that person you slept with, the person that raped you, date rape, drug rape. They transferred a spirit in your body. Let's get that thing out of there. I'm Christine. You're Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> I made it tonight. Good. I need to talk to you before you leave. Okay. Come on, ladies. Let's do it. Put your hand on your body. Let's go. In the name of Jesus, I command every spirit I picked up from an old boyfriend, from a rape, from a one night stand, from an old engagement, from an ex-wife or husband, somebody I slept with, you were married to somebody who was loaded with demons, they had a temper, they had greed, they were controlling, they were a narcissist, you slept with them for years, you picked up spirits from that rotten spouse you used to be married to, come on, that spirit's got to come out of you right now, now go! Come out now. Every X you ever touched comes out of your body now. Come on. When you were young. Come on. Get. Come on, guys. Get that woman out of you. Right now. Come on, guys. You went to a whore. You went to a whore, guys. Come on, guys. You went to a whore. 20 bucks oral sex. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. You got you got the short version. You picked up a spirit when you went to a prostitute. You picked, a, you picked up a spirit when you went to a whore. By definition, you picked up one. Every hooker, every whore has demons. 100% of them. 100% of every hooker and whore has demons by definition and if you went to them no matter what you did with them no matter what Clinton said you picked up spirits and you got to get them out of your body right now because they will give you a terminal illness when you get older you will get sick you will have plumbing problems you have organ problems stomach issues irritable bowel syndrome uh, you will have tumors in your bladder and your kitty all kinds of weird stuff's gonna go on because you picked up a spirit from somebody you should have never even shaken hands with. Let's get him out. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ. Spirit of adultery and fornication. Every ugly man that ever touched me. Come on, buddy. All these ugly men. Every one of them. Come on. Every woman that ever touched me. Every woman I ever touched. Go. Go. Jesus. Everyone I ever slept with, your ex-husband, your ex-wife, you went back to sleeping with them after you were married. Remember that? Remember that? You tried to get back together two or three times. You'd go over there for sex. You're divorced. You weren't supposed to go back to that person anyway. They were loaded with demons, but you kept going back because you had a demonic soul tie to that man or that woman. They kept pulling you back. They pull you in. Right now, we'll break that soul tie. Right now. You had a soul tie to a woman and you kept going back to her. Break it now. Let's do that. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I break the soul tie that caught me from fornication, from masturbation, from pornography, from flirting, from whoring. I break this wickedness off of me now in the name of Jesus. I break it off of me in the name of the Lord. I break every sin, every sin I ever got involved in. I'm breaking it tonight by the blood that Jesus shed, by the precious blood, by the precious blood of the Lamb. I break every wickedness, every curse anybody ever spoke over me, every lie anybody ever spoke over me. I break it tonight by the blood that Jesus shed. Come on, use the blood that Jesus shed. The blood will save you, heal you, cleanse you, deliver you. Come on. The precious blood from the cross. The cross of Calvary. The blood of Jesus. Let's go. You've got to be healed tonight. Let's do it. Let's, let's do this. 
hopelessness, I command you to come out of the man of God. Satan, I bind your power. Release this healing gift. He's always wanted to heal people with these hands. Release that gift. Yes. Release that gift. You're supposed to be healing people. Stop it. Come out of there. He's supposed to be healing people. He's not. That's ridiculous. He already has his healing gift. He's not using it. YouTubers, don't listen to me. You've already got your gift. Stop sitting around begging God to give you the gift of this and give you the gift of that. You already have it. You've already got it. You need to learn to release it. You have to learn to release it by doing something. If you don't do anything, then you're going to get nothing. <laughs> release it. You must release it. I repent of thinking I don't have my gifts. I don't have my anointing. I don't have the blessings of God. I repent of it. Right now, I repent of it. That's a lie. That's not true. That's not true. God chose the weak things of this world. God chose things that are despised. Things that are nothing. He chose them to bring down the things that are. I was chosen by God to bring down the things that are. That's right. You've been chosen by God. You are to be a demon killer. A sin killer. You are to crush the kingdom of darkness. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. That is the purpose of the Son of God. You are to be like Him. You have been called to be like Him. You are to crush the works of the devil. You are not to take a beating. You are to dish it out. Offering bucket. Oh, they're on the doors. Oh, they're on the doors. Thanks for coming. Hope you come back. I will. Thank you. Come on. You're not taking beatings anymore. Do you hear me? You're dishing them out. Can I get prayer for my bladder? It's, it's bladder is emotional. Since 91. 90, since 91. No. Bladder is emotional. It's a wound on the soul that tears the organs up. Now, now, who hurt you more than anybody? My parents for not Which protecting one? me. Both of me. For not protecting me. From? From the sexual sin of my grandfather. Granddad? Yeah, what, they both He fondled you? Yeah. Or was it intercourse or fondling? Fondling. Fondling? And how, over what period of time? My whole life until he died. They knew. And he, he had died and you were how old? Fifteen. Fifteen. From what age did it start? Birth. Uh, they think two years or younger. They don't really know. Okay. So from as far as you can remember to age 15, yeah. you got fondled by your grandfather. Who lived with us. Correct? Who lived well, with us. What was his name? Uh, his name is Jesus, but it really Jesus. Messed, it kind of messed me up because it's spelled the same way Jesus' name is spelled. Okay. Now, first of all, uh, I'll pretend I'm you right now. Okay. okay? So I'm going to pray pretend okay. I'm you. Lord Jesus, uh, Jesus is not you. Yes. And that is a lie the devil put in my head. And I renounce that lie right now. And I repent of thinking that. That is demonic stupidity. That's a devil trying to mess me up. And that's a lie. Jesus and Jesus of Nazareth are two 100% polar opposites. And from this day forward, I'm leaving that lie right here. Go. And now, Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me for picking up a curse. I, the Bible says, Thou shalt not dishonor thy mother nor thy father. And I hated them because they wouldn't protect me. And it brought a curse on me. And since I no longer need my mother and father, all I need is my heavenly father. I am going to release both of them from my soul right now and let them go and replace them with my heavenly father from this moment on. And I'm going to break this parental curse off of me because I cursed them. I hated them. I said negative things about them. I trashed them because they wouldn't pr protect me from my grandfather's sexual perversion demons. And he fondled me 
for almost 15 years. They knew it was happening and they didn't protect me. And I hold bitterness and ought and blame in my heart for my mom and dad. There they come. There he is. Here he comes. Good. There they come. Mother, come on. Go. Come out right now. Go. There they go. Mother and father, come out. I break this curse off of me. I break this curse off me now. I curse my parents and it boomerangs. If you curse your parents, it boomerangs. The, per the kid doesn't know it. Go. It boomerangs on you. If you curse your parents, you actually curse yourself. You hated your parents because they did something horrible. Now this poor lady here, her parents knew their granddad was molesting her. Come out. Hey Zeus, come out. Hey Zeus, come out. There. Come out. And they didn't protect her. Where you been? Where you been? Before that. Why you been doing? How long are you here for? Come out. Thirty days. So what? I'm gonna try to stay longer because. I, I'm not feeling well. Yeah, I know you're not. You're going to change how you think and you're going to start getting the demons out, right? When, yeah, we went through this before. Do the service? My tongue came out. I saw it. We went through that before. Why did I manifest in the service? Because he was scared. The demon? He's afraid you're going to turn on him and change how you think and take authority over him. Instead of talking about everything that's wrong with you all the time, he was afraid you were going to turn on him right now. I'm afraid to go back to Russian God. See, now, see that fear you just said? Now he's fine. No, because when I'm there, no, the demon's fine now because now you're afraid. There's nothing we can do. And Lord, I'm are you going to tell him to come out and command him to stop it, or are you going to be afraid? See, now he's scared. Now he's scared. What are you going to do about it? Get him out of there. Get him out. You tell that pervert to come out. Make the pervert come out. Make him come out. Get out there. Come out of there. Go, you pervert. Get out of my head. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my body right now. Go. Come out. Go. Come out of there. Go. Right now, go. Come out, go. Come out, you pervert. Come out, you pervert. Get out of my body right now. Come out, you pervert. Let's go. Tell him to come out. Get him out of there. Get him out of there. Come on. Come out right now. Stop. Stop attacking me. Stop it. Come out of my body right now. Tell him to come out. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Make him come out. Tell him. In Jesus' holy name, I command. In Jesus' mighty name, I command. Come out. Come out right now. Hey. Stop, Matt. Stop. Get him out of there. Come out. Come out right now. Get those demons out of there. Come out right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out. Come out right now. Go. YouTubers, listen to me. Put your hand on your body. You've got to take authority over demons. You cannot pray over them. Stop praying. Praying's not going to work. Jesus prayed before he faced the devil. He didn't pray about the devil. Use your authority as Jesus taught you. Take command as he taught you. Fight back like he taught you. Fight back like he taught you. This isn't a church. Okay, you're not at church. We don't need any church crap here. You need to stand up and fight. The devil loves church. He floods demons in churches every Sunday morning. What are you doing? Make him stop that. Get out of there. What are you doing? Standing up making excuses? Come on, buddy, right now. Hurry up and get out of the body. Come on there now. Come on right now. Stop making excuses. Dennis, fight back. Make him come up. Get out of my body. Say it. Get out of my body. Say it. Get out of my body. Say it. Good. Say that. Get up. Get up. 
this demon possessed guy, we're gonna start making excuses. If you start making excuses, you will never be healed. You will never find your destiny. Your gifts will never be released. Excuses are like Ebola. Excuses will kill you. You make excuses, you are fit. What are you doing? Ah, get him out. Stop that. Get that thing out. Stop that right now. Get that body right now. Get us. Fight harder. Make him stop that. Stop it in Jesus' name. If you make excuses, you will end up screwed, blued, and tattooed. You know what that means? You will die a loser. All losers died making an excuse. You don't have any excuses anymore. Okay? You can't have the Holy Ghost and have excuses. They are polar opposites. The Holy Ghost doesn't make excuses. He gets the job done every single time. Why? He's got the blood of Jesus. He's got the broken body of Christ. There are no excuses when you've got the blood and the broken body of the Son of God. So just repent of it. Lord, I keep making excuses. What are you doing? Well, it's not coming out. Not but, it, but you just said it one because you, you were doubting. No. Repent of it. No. Yeah, see? You doubt. Repent of it right now. Are you going to let him do that right now? You're letting him do that? Yeah, okay. No. You need to go out in the parking lot. Huh? You need to leave. Go in the parking lot. Go on. Leave. You get out of here. You're going to let him do that? Are you gonna let him keep doing that? Are you gonna let him do that? Come out of that body right now! Get out of that body right now! Come out right now! Stop that and get out of my body! I've had enough of it! Come out of my guts! Come up right now! You liar! Come out of there, you liar! Stop doing that to me! By the authority of the word of God, stop doing that to me! Dennis, fight back! Dennis! Stop, let, don't let him growl like that. Tell him to come out. There you go, good. Say it. There you go, say that. Good, Dennis. Good. Good, Dennis, say it. You get out of my body right now. No excuses. Stop making excuses. Poison, come up. Poison, come out of my body right now. Get out. Get out. Come out of there right now. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Medications. Doctors. Doctors. Medication. Pills. Lies. Come out of my body right now. All of it. Everything. Come out. All of it. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Go. I decree tonight's your last night to make an excuse. You're not doing it anymore. No, no, no. Tonight's the end of it. Tonight's the end of it. Now. It ends now. You're out of excuses. You're fresh out of it. You're fresh out of excuses. You have none left. Come on. You're a born again Christian. You have the Holy Ghost. I know you do. You are out of excuses. Okay? You can repent. You can change. You can turn your life around. You can be all God has called you to be. That's right. You have that ability because the Holy Ghost gives it to you. You have it already. You must reach out with your faith. What's he doing? What'd he do? My knees are hurting. You know what's hurting? Me looking at that demon doing that. That's hurting me. I'm tired of it. It's not coming out. There's nothing I can do. There is. You're lying. Now you're lying. You're lying. I have no control. You're lying. You have control. Stop him. When you were here last time, when you were here last time, you stopped him. You remember that? Yeah. When you were here last time, you were stopping him, and then you left. No. Make him stop. Come out. Come out of that body. Get out of that body. Come out of my body right now. Stop making excuses. Stop lying. Come out right now. Stop sticking your tongue out like Make him come out. Make him come out. He's making a fool out of you. You have control over him. The Bible says you do. Come inside. Do we not embrace? Get come on. Fight back. Dennis, come on. Fight back. 
Dennis, fight back. There's nothing I can do. You lied to me. You're a liar. I'm not a liar. You lied to me. There's nothing I can do. You're supposed to do exactly what I told you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to stop that and come out. Say it. Say it again. Come on, say it. Don't let him talk. In the name of Jesus, I command you to come out. In Jesus' name. Good, good. Good. I command you to come out in Jesus' name. Keep going. Say it until you believe it. Come out, come out, come out. Come out in Jesus' name. Good, excellent. Good, Dennis. Come out in Jesus' name. Make him, make him believe you believe it. Come out in Jesus' name. He doesn't believe you believe it. He thinks you're bluffing. Come on, Dennis. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out in Jesus' name. There you go. Keep going. More. More. There he comes. More. Get out of the body right now. Come out of there right now. Spirit, come out of there right now. Spirit, come out quicker. Get come out quicker. Up, Satan! Come out quicker. Come out quicker. Go now. Come out quicker. Quicker, come out of me right now. All of you. Good, Dennis. Now they're coming up. Open up. Dennis, fight back. Fight back. Lucifer. Lucifer, what a joke. Come out of that head right now. Come out right now. Lying spirit. Deaf and dumb spirit. Deaf and dumb spirit. You come out too, all three of you. Come on. All three of you. Destroyer. Destroyer, make it four. Come out. No, don't let him look around like that. Come on, go keep going after him. Say it. Say it again. In the name of Jesus, the Son of God, I command you, Satan, to come out of me. I command you to come out of me. Say it. Dennis. Say it. Say what? Say it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come out of body. Go. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Good, Dennis. Good. I command you to go. Good. Good, Dennis. Jesus Christ. Good. I command you. Go. All evil spirits must leave my command body. You to go. I command you to go. Command you to go. Alright, quickly, if you can speak in tongues, come up here real quickly. Come up and see me. If you can speak in tongues, come up here real quick. Can you speak in tongues? Come here real quick. I'm going to show you something to do at your church. You do this at your church. When you go to your back to your church. Let me show you. Come up here, sweetheart. Can you speak in tongues? Come up and stand here with me. Can you speak in tongues? Come on over here. All right. Can you speak in tongues? Can you speak in tongues? I'm going to try. You can't speak in tongues? Well, I'm working on it. Oh, okay. But I'm going to come up here and Okay. Here, just step over here and I'll show you what to do. That's not going to work. I'll show you. You right here? Who can speak in tongues? Come up here, sweetheart. Yes. Very much so. Come on up here. You speak in tongues? Ah, oh, good. Come on over here. Oh, are you speaking tongues, sweetheart? You speaking tongues? Uh, no, they oh, here. Gave me, they Stand over here. Something that wasn't tongues. Oh, okay. Hold on there. I'll fix it for you. Yeah, stay right there. I'll fix it for you. Come on up here. You speaking tongues? All right. You ready? Now I'm gonna show you how to, you get your you get your church people together in a little group like this. Okay. And then what you want to do is draw in the anointing in the church. Draw in the anointing. And here's how you do it. What you do is just take a big breath and relax your body. Just relax. Relax your body. And then you just kind of start whispering it out. Gently. Start whispering it out gently. And then you kind of increase it slowly. Raise your hands. Raise your hands. Come on, crank it out now. Go. Kendora motion, Doravaria. 
Levo shando la la shatara bora mashin de vivi. Hilo shala la la mashin de vivi. Come Holy Spirit. Yondara mashin de vivi. Rebo baba mashin de vivi. Hilo mashin de rabo shatara baba. Le mashin de rabo mashin de vivi. Let me hear yours. Mine didn't just sound like yours. Okay, don't. I think it's not good. I didn't ask for an explanation. I just want to hear it. Okay, stop. Now uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, valid, but it's blocked. It's blocked. It's easy to fix. Hold on. Louder, please. In the remotion, the river, 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 shoot, or rova, baba, baba, Come, Holy Spirit. Holy Vashemi, real motion, the remotion, that. Hello, my shandora, bore, bebe, bebe, ya. Bore, mo shandora, bo, shotara, bebe. Hello, baba. You, you repeat after me. Voka, ba. Voka, ba. Be shotata. Be shotata. Alubi. Alubi. Maru, vasha. Maru, vasha. Now, did you have to notice I was speaking in short syllables? And when you were doing it, it was all running together. Brrr. Notice the difference? See that? It's blocked. We're un going to unblock it now. Okay, now you follow me again. Okay. And now you add some syllables on your own. Any syllable, there's no wrong answer. Any syllable. Good. Any syllable. Yeah, good. Keep going. Close your eyes. All right, now when I count to three, we switch over to singing. When we count to three, we switch over to singing. One, two, three. Remosha velo la tu remosha. Remosha velo. Come on, ladies, louder. Hello, Valevola. Hello, Vashula. 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 Hello, yeah, hold on a second. Stop doing that to her. Stop it right now. Stop. Okay. Ready? Now just gently and relax. Any syllable, just sing it out. Okay, stand up. Now, when you hear that, that was, I'll do a syllable and you just repeat it. Come on, ladies. Now, we're not going to let the angels out praise us tonight. The angels second us first. Here we go. Louder. Louder. Come on now. Feel that fear in there? Can you feel it? A little bit. Anxiety? A little bit. Feel that? Okay, you turn your back so nobody can see you. Okay. You just raise your hand, close your eyes, take a big breath. Big breath. Ready? Take a big breath. Now just use your mind, breathe out of your mouth. Just relax. Nobody can see you because the lights are off and your back is to them because no one's looking at you. No one can see you. Okay, close your eyes, try to relax, try to relax, and use your mind. I want you to scream at him in your mind, scream in your mind, not out loud. Breathe out of your mouth, just scream at him. Just scream at him. I command this witchcraft spirit and this fear spirit to come out of me right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, by his blood, by his cross. I bind this spirit in my body. And I command him to come out. Just scream in your mind. Scream as loud as you can. In your head. Not out loud. In your head. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of my body. I renounce this witchcraft curse. I renounce this wickedness. I renounce this witch from Mexico. I renounce that sin. 
Remosha velola tu remosha. Come on, ladies. Uh, in a few months, I'm going to start a glossa choir, and I need a bunch of women to do it. I can't get men to do it. Plus, women sound better. When you sing in, sing in tongues, that's the highest form of worship known to man, singing in tongues. Because it's a heavenly language, not a human language. Come on, ladies, let's sing it. You scream at him and tell him you hate him and you want him out of your body at any cost. You get out of my body at any cost in the name of Jesus Christ. You come out right now. I hate you. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I want you out at any cost. Come out of me now. Scream at him in your mind. You're doing great. Okay, you're, you don't think so much. Just relax and just let it out. Okay, you're not trying to memorize. You're just releasing it. It's real easy if you relax. You said it. Did you hear what you said? Oh, yeah. That blocked it. Oh, shoot. Because there's no way it can come out wrong. There's nothing wrong. Okay. The only thing wrong is how you think. Okay. Okay. So it's just going to come out how it's supposed to. Uh, yeah, any way it comes out. Just do it any way. This is how you get a revival going in your church. You get to you get the people together that can sing in tongues and draws in the anointing in the in the building. That's what you're looking for. You want the anointing in the building. So when people come there, they sense the Holy Ghost and they get more relaxed. And then they start opening up to God. That's what you want them to do. You want people to relax and Amen. open up their hearts to the Lord. Amen. If they're all tensed up, Amen. they can't receive a healing or a miracle. Amen. If you get all tensed up, the Holy Spirit can't move. Amen. So you have to learn to relax and sing it in tongues is the best way to do it. See how relaxed this lady is? <laughs> right here, look at her. Just be like that. <laughs> Amen. 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 See, you just cut the tow line on that boat. You're carrying your garbage, and now you're entering in with praise. Enter his courts, courts with thanksgiving and praise. That's what King David said. It's called the sacrifice of praise. The legendary British evangelist Smith Wigglesworth said, If the Spirit doesn't move me, I move the Spirit. What was he talking about there? Stepping out in faith and you move first. The Bible says, Draw nigh to God, He will draw nigh to you. You must move first. Then He moves. See, it's like checkers. You can't play checkers by yourself unless you've got multiple personality disorder. <laughs> You move first, shh, then the Holy Ghost moves. Shh, you let the voice out, then the Holy Ghost moves. See, when you pray in Glossa, you pray in the Spirit, and the demons don't know what you're praying, and they don't know what you're singing, but the Holy Spirit interprets it, and then He applies it wherever He needs it applied. He will crush the devil like a cockroach, but you got to go first checkers one guy moves then the other one moves you don't move twice in checkers the Holy Ghost moves only after you've moved it's called stepping out on faith you can even talk to the devil if you want him hey you've been trashing me for years how would you like to hear this take that 
Stick that in your ear. <laughs> you done all these bad things to me and I'm still praising? Oh, you got to lose. You got to win when you're praising and things are going bad. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, everything means when bad things happen. Your bad times are your assets. That's how you grow. Come out. Keep huffing. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Cough harder. Get out of my body. Come out of my breath. Come out of my groin. Come out of my chest. Come out of my lungs. Right now. Come out now. Fight harder. What you're doing now is what the Bible calls koinonia. It's the communion of the Holy Ghost. Koinonia means partnership, relationship. So you have a partnership or a relationship with the Holy Ghost. That's called the communion, koinonia of the Spirit. And you can draw in that relationship by worshiping the Son of God. Here's how you do it. Next year, I hope to have a glossa choir here. Not a church choir. Church choirs don't work. Glossa choirs draw in the Holy Ghost. If choirs did any good, the Mormons would be the most spiritual people in the world. Have you seen their choir? That thing is awesome. Choirs don't work. Here's what works. Praise from the heart works. See, God doesn't look at good voices. He looks at hearts. That's what he wants. Singing beautiful songs is useless. You don't need a Grammy Award winning singer. Kick them out the church. Get somebody who can't say it all with a good heart and you'll draw in the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. Everything about the Lord is the opposite of what you think. It's the opposite. The Spirit of God is the opposite of what people think. YouTubers, listen to me. If you've got some bondage on your life and you can't break it off, I'm going to show you how to do it. Watch this. Here, I'll use the ladies to show you. Uh, hold, stop singing. Okay, stop. Come on over here. Stop. Stop singing. I need you guys to help me because the YouTubers are listening, okay? Now, I want to tell you something. Some things in life have bondage on them, demonic bondage, and praying doesn't work. And everybody knows that. No one will say it except me. Some things you pray over, sometimes you prayed for years, and it's not working. Okay? God showed me this technique several years ago. I actually, it's not in the Bible. I made it up. And so I tried it, and it, since it was working on 90% of the people, I kept doing it. It's not in the Bible. I made it up on my own. I was praying one day, and it just came to me. I thought, well, I'm going to try that. And I couldn't believe it. It worked. Some things are in bondage, and that means it's the devil's got such a vicious hold on it that praying won't make him let go. Okay? So you can use this technique to break a hard bondage, you know, like, like a, an addiction or a, some demonic stranglehold on your kid or something like that, something that just won't let him go. Okay? I'm going to show you how to do it. All you got to do, it's real simple. You just say whatever it is, whatever you want. Let's say, Lord, I'm going to pray over my uh, my daughter. She got pregnant again by another, we don't even know who. It's a spirit of whoredom. And that demon won't let my daughter go. I'm going to break that bondage off my daughter. It could be that. It could be anything. You pick it. It doesn't matter. It's whatever is important to you. And then you use what I call war tongues or your battle tongues. Okay. I just made I made the name up. You can make your own name up. It's not in the Bible. I just made it up. You pick out that and then you then you let that bondage have it. Here's how you do it. Ramusha Vasha Dresa. Voya Vasha Ne. Voya Mosha Dros. Fagalo. Varimosha Da. Voya Vasha Dresa. 
Yota Mati Shata Mabakati. Yada Mabakati. Yoda Pick it out. Pick it out. What do you need to pray for? What do you need to pray for? Pick it out. You got it? You got one? You got one? Ready? One, two, three, go! Fire! Shut up, shut up! Promo Shabe! Yano Shabrote! Yeko Vasha! Promo Shabe! La Morava! Break! Romo Shabasha! Romo Shabe! Yeah, you don't preach. Thank you, sir. Love it. Love it so much. Thank you. Glad you guys came. So much. That was great. Well, thank you. It was nice of you.